Armageddon, a word whispered amongst the gods as the last battle between good and evil, a precursor to the day of judgment. But in this realm, Armageddon is not about heavenly judgment. It's about the hell these warriors are about to endure. Greed, jealousy, anger, frustration, hunger, and glory. The battleground of these emotions will be laid bare this evening. Tonight, chaos will be orchestrated in the most brutal manner. The devil's playground, the most demonic structure ever created. Hell in a cell. The end is here. Within its steel confines, destinies will be shaped, and the WWE Championship the will hang in the balance. No matter the result, these men will emerge forever changed after tonight's battle. Armageddon unfolds, and as we approach the end of the year, the end of worlds, the echoes of this event will resonate through the ages. The stakes have never been higher, as the devil's structure encases six warriors in a symphony of brutality. An iconic class seeks one more golden accolade. The rated R superstar, Edge, has been met with failure on this battlefield that have led to tonight's one final chance. Can he seize the opportunity, or is this the end of the line? Standing in his way, a dominating ring general, Gunther, a force to be reckoned with, whose reign at the top is only just beginning. Eight championships will be on the line, a testament to the culmination of a year filled with battles, triumphs, and heartbreak. As we enter the final live premiere event of 2023, the name Armageddon resonates with an ending and a beginning, ushering in a night that transcends the ordinary. Tonight, the very essence of Armageddon will be held within the squared circle. The final live premiere event of 2023, a night where metal is tested and the very fabric of the WWE is changed forever. Tonight, in the Motor City, the Warriors are ready to forge their destinies, leave an indelible mark on the canvas of time. Prepare yourselves for an unholy evening as hell approaches and Armageddon is here. You are looking live at Rock City, Motown, Detroit, Michigan, as we approach Little Caesars Arena for the final live premiere event of this 2023 calendar. Welcome to Armageddon, a night where eight championships will be defended, including the Hell in the Cell main event. Tonight, a very anticipated evening. Lives will be changed. Careers will be altered. Championships are on the line live from Little Caesars Arena. Welcome to Detroit, Michigan. This arena has been sold out for weeks for Armageddon, the final live premiere event of the year. And we're set to kick things off with the Cruiserweight Championship. It is going to be a golden evening here in Detroit, Michigan, as we kick things off on behalf of Friday Night SmackDown. And the Cruiserweight Championship of the World is on the line, and the challenger tonight, a man who has burst on the scene on Friday nights, Nathan Frazier, the always exciting man from across the pond in Wales, really turning up the volume on his young career over the last few months. Nathan Frazier, a former NXT Heritage Cup winner, burst on the scene through SmackDown, through the Cruiserweight Classic. Saw him go one-on-one -on -one with Angel Garza, Wesley, Johnny Gargano at one point. Frazier joining the Friday Night SmackDown brand and even teamed up with his tag team partner, or I should say his opponent tonight, in a tag team matchup, Ilya Dragunov, several weeks ago in Dragunov's pursuit of Santos Escobar back at Survivor Series. 
The invincible one got the job done three weeks ago in Madison Square Garden to win the gold tonight. His very first defense against a man who I'm sure he respects. But that respect goes out the window when that bell sounds and the championship is on the line. And that was well documented this past Friday when this man, the Mad Dragon, the invincible Ilya Dragunov, took off one half of Los Lotharios and Angel Garza. Dragunov has also burst on the scene on SmackDown thanks to his victory in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, which propelled him the number one contendership. And as you see, the gold around the waist of the Mad Dragon, making the most of his opportunity and really making the most of 2023 thus far. Ilya Dragunov, one of the candidates for the Breakout Superstar of the Year for the WWE Slammy Awards. Winners will be revealed in a special Monday Night Raw Slammy Award edition tomorrow night, but Ilya Dragunov making a case for that trophy throughout 2023. Cruiserweight Championship, Cruiserweight Classic winner, won the Intercontinental Gold, a part of Monday Night Raw back at WrestleMania earlier this year. But can Dragunov really end 2023 on a high note? That is the question tonight as we kick off Armageddon from Detroit. Cruiserweight Championship is on the line as Ilya Dragunov defends the gold against the young, hungry Nathan Frazier. And I got a feeling this is gonna be a good one, live from a sold out Little Caesars Arena. The first of eight championships being defended tonight. As we said, a golden evening here in Motown. Every single match tonight with such high stakes and certainly high rewards. But here we go, very excited for this one. This may be the dark horse of this evening. Nathan Frazier, Ilya Dragunov for the prestigious Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. Take it away. Introducing the challenger from Jersey in the Channel Islands, weighing in at 182 pounds, Nathan Frazier. And his opponent from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, he is the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Ilya Well, as you heard in the introductions, this is a international affair for that world-renowned championship that Dragunov may be handing over for not the, only the first, but possibly the last time in his Cruiserweight Championship reign. And what an opportunity for Nathan Frazier, very young in his SmackDown career, opening up what is going to be an epic live premiere event for that prestigious gold. Will Frazier be able to make the most of this opportunity, or is he just going to be a stepping stone for the Mad Dragon? Bell sounds, we are underway, and Nathan Frazier hot out of the gate, bursting on the scene just like he has on Friday night SmackDown, and here he goes. Nathan Frazier knows he has got to bring the fight to Ilya Dragunov. It is well documented. Ilya Dragunov thrives off pain inside of that squared circle. Nathan Frazier trying to get the early advantage, try to wear down the Cruiserweight Champion. Can't knock the hustle of the challenger. But certainly don't want to tick off the champion. Respect is there, but as we said, the respect went out the window the second that bell rang. These two men get to run at each other like two hungry bulls looking to eat that Cruiserweight Championship. Dragunov's trying to get back in this matchup after some hot few moments from Frazier, who's trying to stack up the offense in the early going. And here he goes again, taking things to the air. Nathan Frazier brings a very high offense and certainly sometimes not so high reward inside of that squared circle as he just meant the canvas that time. You don't want to go to the well with the same maneuvers over and over again against somebody as sadistic and brutal as Ilya Dragunov inside of that ring. One of the toughest superstars, not just on SmackDown, but in all of the WWE. Nathan Frazier going for the shooting star and getting the knees up. Very back and forth since the opening bell. Another cruiserweight champion trying to ground this ever high-flying challenger. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us. We are live from the Little Caesars Arena, Detroit, Michigan, for your final live premiere event of this calendar year. It is Armageddon, and we are kicking things off with the always exciting cruiserweight division. Dragunov stacking up those lariats in the corner. 
Not just yet, Nathan Frazier survives. Nathan Frazier did not make a name for himself on SmackDown, and when he was down in NXT down there as well, through giving up in these high-profile matches, he is a tough kid. But can he get the job done when the lights are on bright and the opportunity couldn't be any higher tonight? Now Nathan Frazier again loves to use that body as a weapon. Or it's maneuvers like that or getting fancy and taking things really to the air. Loves to utilize that Phoenix Splash, Spanish Fly at times as well. We saw him utilize both of those maneuvers against Akira Tozawa two weeks ago on SmackDown. What is it going to take to keep down the man Dragon tonight? Or does Nathan Frazier have what it takes to keep down Dragon off? That is the question that is at hand, but he is doing the, dare I say, smart thing so far. And again, stacking up the offense. That's what you got to do it. Holy hell. Hot out of the gate. Poison run on the outside. Nathan Frazier did not come to mince words tonight. Understands the opportunity at hand. Reverse run at ringside. The champion has been grounded. Nathan Frazier is not looking to see this opportunity pass him by. He understands that championship matches don't come around every day. He has got to make the most of this one that he's got tonight. As now goes to the back of Dragunov with the stabber. Referee at a count of five. Nathan Frazier, I'm sure, knows he can't win the championship via count out tonight. He's going to have to get this thing back inside the squared circle. Ilya Dragunov, on the other hand, not a man who is usually satisfied at any sort of other defeat besides a pinfall. But right there, Nathan Frazier catching Dragunov. Dragunov trying to escape back in the ring, but there is no escape for the high-risk Nathan Frazier. Beautiful missile drop kick moments ago, and now Ilya Dragunov just trying to create some distance. The Invincible One has been in some hell of a tough fights throughout this year. We've seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Santos Escobar at Madison Square Garden three weeks ago at Survivor Series. Butch back at WrestleMania. What about all the championship defenses throughout Ilya Dragunov's intercontinental title reign? Talking Tyler Bate. We're talking Xavier Woods, Apollo Crews, Shinsuke Nakamura. But now Dragunov, a part of the SmackDown brand and looking to do the Cruiserweight Championship crowd tonight as he starts to mount a comeback here. But will it be enough to take the heart out of Frazier? Dragunov has got to find a way to break this young kid's confidence as he sends him into the corner that time. And this is Ilya Dragunov at his most dangerous. The strikes, physical as all hell. And a send time for good measures. Ain't gonna see Frazier taking things to the air if he cracks a rib, that's for damn sure. Cruiserweight champion not done yet, going for that. Uranagi, and into the cover to retain the title. Not just yet, Frazier's still in this thing. I think Dragunov thought he had it that time. I believe he might have stacked it up offense. And knocked Nathan Frazier silly long enough, but nonetheless, still in this matchup with Alex for the shoulder block. Ilya Dragunov, very rare to see him take things to the air, but not something he is afraid to do. And this is going to be Dragunov's best shot at retaining his championship, in my opinion. Grounding the high-flying Nathan Frazier, not allowing him to do what he does best. There's Frazier now. Nice mood salt. Just like that, Nathan takes the opportunity. Look at him go. You cannot take the heart out of Frazier. That is something we have all found out firsthand ever since he burst on the scene on Friday Night SmackDown. And down goes the champion again at ringside. And Nathan Frazier going to follow him out there. But I don't think that's a good idea. Dragging off ragdolling him into the barricade. No respect when that bell sounds and the championship is on the line. It's a fight to the bitter end. Meanwhile, oh my goodness. The Man Dragon showing why he has earned that title. That was a receipt for that Poison Run on the outside a few minutes ago. Power bomb right on the top of the barrier. And look at how his incapacitated Nathan Fraser, at least momentarily. But hold that thought. Standing Spanish fly in the ring. Super kick. Fraser's got to take advantage. Nathan Frazier 
The fatigue's starting to set in. And now we're going for the moonsault. Lands on his feet. Dragon off comes from behind. Back and forth the momentum goes. Counter by Frazier. Backdrop he goes. Counter by Dragon off. There's the pinfall. Nice sequence of maneuvers there to retain the title. Not just yet. Man, what a matchup kicking things off here tonight in Detroit. And Frazier takes down the champion again. Looked like Dragunov might have been eyeing Nathan Frazier up for that lariat moments ago. Clearly the challenger did his homework. And now look, takes down the champion once more. But will he have enough to get the three count in this matchup? Wait a minute. There he goes over the top rope with the somersault plancha. Nathan Frazier soaring through the sky like a bald eagle tonight. The Mad Dragon has got his back up against the wall as the challenger looking to become the champion. Oh, not at ringside this time. Frazier leaving everything inside the ring and out of it tonight. No stone unturned. Nathan Frazier will try anything to win the Cruiserweight Championship. Man, if this is just the opening matchup tonight, imagine what the rest of this night's gonna be live from Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Back inside the ring at the count of six. And the champion is worse for wear right now. Maybe his toughest battle over the last couple of months since joining Friday Night SmackDown. There's another reversal there, and Dragunov gonna take out the knee. Certainly ain't gonna be flying around from pillar to post if he got a busted up knee, and Dragunov trying to ground this young man. Now creating some distance, slowing down the pressure. But who is gonna get the best of them? Another counter by the champion. Fraser with a reversal, and once again, taking Ilya Dragunov down. The Mad Dragon cannot find a window of opportunity right now. The challenger may be becoming the champion in mere moments. Middle buckle he goes. Going for a moonsault, and as you turned around, Dragonoff was already to his feet. A crash and burn. And now Ilya Dragonoff starting to unload. That's why they call it high risk, high reward. Nathan Frazier might have cost himself that time as Dragunov delivers the lariat and goes for the cover to retain the Cruiserweight Championship of the world. Not just yet, Nathan Frazier's alive. Frazier still into this matchup, even off the crash and burn, the unloading of strikes and that big time lariat and now getting sent into the corner. Frazier taken to the top, not by will, but by force, as he was dragged down to the canvas. And now the man dragging in the corner, turning up the volume, looking for a Torpedo Moscow! Into the cover. And the Cruiserweight Championship remains with the invincible man dragging on Friday Night Smackdown, Ilya Dragunov. Well, Nathan Frazier pushing Dragunov to his limits tonight, but nobody escapes a Torpedo Moscow. Here is your winner, and still the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Ilya Dragunov. Well, that was one hell of a way to kick off tonight's festivities in Detroit. Nathan Frazier will live to fight another day, but as for Armageddon, the Cruiserweight Championship of the World remains in the grasp of the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. The next time we come your way for a live premiere event, we kick off 2024 as the road to WrestleMania begins. Sunday night. January the 7th, we come to you from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada for the 2024 Royal Rumble. What will happen at one of the most anticipated events of the year? A night where 15 Raw and 15 SmackDown superstars battle it out for a chance to main event WrestleMania. Join us live Sunday night, January the 7th, 2024 
for the Royal Rumble. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. That is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. The Royal Rumble coming your way Sunday night, January the 7th, 2024. Four weeks from tonight. But who is going to be the Intercontinental Champion heading in to the first live premiere event of 2024? We find out right now. Cameron Grimes looking to go to the moon here tonight at Armageddon. And the thing about tonight's matchup is Cameron Grimes may just have the momentum in his corner. Grimes has been a part of the Monday Night Raw brand for quite some time, but really wasn't finding any luck for months on end until the final Monday Night Raw before Survivor Series where Grimes went one-on-one -on -one with the Intercontinental Champion LA Knight. And in a shocking turn of events, Grimes was able to upset the champion on that night, a loss that did not sit very kindly to the defiant LA Knight. Just two weeks ago, Knight laid out Grimes with not one but two BFTs, blood force traumas inside of the squared circle after Cameron Grimes defeated Apollo Crews on Monday Night Raw. But now Grimes looking to capitalize on the opportunity that he created and get the victory where it matters most when the championship is on the line and the lights are on bright at Armageddon. And here comes the megastar himself, the reigning defending intercontinental champion. LA Knight won that gold back in July and since then he has retained the gold over Ilya Dragunov, the man who you just saw inside the squared circle. Cedric Alexander not once but twice. Sami Zayn not once but twice. But LA Knight has found himself with a roadblock in Cameron Grimes. Tonight, put up or shut up time for the mega star. You want to prove that the win for Grimes of several weeks ago was a fluke. Well, tonight's the night to prove it. Championships on the line. Win or go home. It's either going to be the biggest win of Cameron Grimes' career or LA Knight is going to shut down all of his naysayers and really prove that that loss last month on Raw was simply a bump in the road. All remains to be seen. Remember, the winner of this matchup will defend the title against Shinsuke Nakamura in just 24 hours on the Slammy Award edition of Monday Night Raw. High stakes, high reward, live in Detroit, here at Armageddon. Introducing the challenger from Burlington, North Carolina, weighing in at 220 pounds, Cameron. And his opponent, from Hagerstown, Maryland, weighing in at 230 pounds, he is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, L.A. Nice. So our series of championship affairs continues live from the Little Caesars Arena, and this is the first one coming your way from Monday Night Raw. Once more, the winner of this matchup defends that prestigious gold in just 24 hours against the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura, on what is going to be a highly anticipated edition of Monday Night Raw, the 2023 Slammy Awards coming your way tomorrow night. Who will defend the Intercontinental Strap? We're going to find out right here, right now. My goodness, Cameron Grimes hot out of the gate. Going to steal a victory off that Superman punch, but LA Knight gets the shoulder up. Here we go, Intercontinental Championship match. The action kicking us off, or I should say picking us up right where we kicked off moments ago from Friday Night SmackDown. Grimes is hot out of the gate, and you got to believe this is Grimes' best shot to surprise LA Knight once more, just like he did several weeks ago on the Red Brand. I'm sure LA Knight has watched back the tape moment after moment and has had it replayed in his head night after night. Looking for where he went wrong, what mistake caused him to lose that matchup against Cameron Grimes. LA Knight not looking to make the same mistake tonight in Detroit. However, Cameron Grimes hoping for that said same result. 
Another near near fall in the early going. Grimes, you could tell, really trying to throw LA Knight off his game, get the champion frustrated, and hope to capitalize. Look at this. Grimes with the German into the bridge. Another cover. And Knight kicks out again. I mean, this is smart strategy by Cameron Grimes trying to get the early victory and again, just frustrate the champion. Sometimes when you're frustrated from bell to bell, you unfortunately allow yourself, open yourself up to make a mistake and it really gives your opponent the window of opportunity to take advantage. However, the megastar did not come to Detroit tonight to leave without the Intercontinental Championship that he earned over the summer. LA Knight making his star felt throughout 2023. Just like Ilya Dragunov on the bracket for the breakout superstar of the year. For the Slammy Awards, the winner to be revealed tomorrow night. LA Knight winning the Intercontinental Championship back in July, defending it ever since. A man who went one-on-one -on -one with the great one, The Rock, earlier this year at WrestleMania. Knight trying to leave 2023 on his high horse. And Cameron Grimes looking to be the spoiler, but not if the megastar has anything to say about it. Big time neck breaker that time. A defiant champion. There's an A. Larry in combination. He defeated Sami Zayn with that maneuver. Back on the Halloween edition of Raw, but Cameron Grimes able to survive in the early going. As I said, LA Knight has defeated Sami Zayn with that. That was, of course, after a war on Monday Night Raw back in Dublin, Ireland on Halloween night. Still early on in this matchup, Cameron Grimes coming in with a fuel tank of gas. Nowhere near an expiration line. And now off the apron, taking down the champion. LA Knight trying to create some distance after Grimes was hot and heavy in the early going. Not trying to allow a comeback from the challenger here tonight. However, I'm afraid he may not have a choice. Grimes highly motivated to leave here at the Intercontinental title. The rise of Cameron Grimes has begun on Monday Night Raw. Will it continue here tonight? Now look at LA Knight getting physical with his challenger. Not looking to go back-to-back -back losses to a man who is really just starting to find his footing on Monday Night Raw. LA Knight has been one of the faces of the red brand. That you are when you have championship gold around your waist. Bigger the money, bigger the opportunity, more main events, more high-profile matches on live premiere events. That is what LA Knight is really fighting for tonight. His mega star status that Cameron Grimes is trying to steal out from underneath of him. Look at this, LA Knight once again. He has slowed down the pace of this matchup, completely brung Cameron Grimes' momentum to a screeching halt after a hot early going from the challenger. Big time elevated neck breaker there. Grimes is down and out. Might have meant his match. LA Knight swearing down the challenger right now. And Cameron Grimes, you got to believe, was expecting some aggression from LA Knight tonight, especially after the upset a number of weeks ago and then being laid out with not one but two blood force traumas two weeks ago on Raw. Grimes should have expected this fight out of the mega star. Look at this. Reversal at ringside. Grimes not looking to let up this opportunity tonight as he sends LA Knight rib cage first into those diamond plated steps. Oh, wait a minute. Now heading to the top rope. The champion's dazed at ringside. Cross body and it connects. Cameron Grimes taking his body and his own momentum and hopefully his cha championship aspirations to the moon tonight. LA Knight's looking to take a victory to the bank, and now we'll take it out Cameron Grimes at ringside once more. Grimes trying to mount a comeback. The champion, different plans. Now a suplex on the outside. Everything hurts a little bit extra when you're crashing and burning on the outskirts of the squared circle. LA Knight continuing to work on his challenger as Grimes trying to find his way out again. Oh, man! Arm drag, LA Knight just broke through the barricade. I'll bite with not too much force behind it. Did not hurt as much as you usually might have. Hold on, a lot of action to keep up with here as Cameron Grimes laying out the champion. Oh my goodness, he almost had him there. Close call here in Detroit. 
One thing at a time, Grimes now heading to the top. Big turn splash. And he's not done. Literally trying to take his momentum to the moon. Shooting star. Or I'm sorry, a swanton bomb. But the champion is still in it. Cameron Grimes saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Unfortunately, the megastar is still in this match. Man, first the reversal at ringside. Arm dragon, LA Knight. LA Knight's own momentum taking out the barricade. Obviously didn't hit it in a way that was too impactful. He made his way back inside the ring only to get laid out by the challenger. And Grimes was mere seconds away from leaving Detroit with the Intercontinental title. And he may still be on that trajectory. Detroit certainly coming unglued, loving this Intercontinental Championship action on behalf of Monday Night Raw, and certainly appreciating the efforts of this young, hungry challenger. And the crossbody this time in the ring does not do it, and you see the desperation from Cameron Grimes. He thought he had it. Grimes better keep his focus. There's a counter by LA Knight. Grimes cannot allow LA Knight's survival in this matchup to throw him off his game. Burning hammer, and that may do it. Championship remaining with the Defiant Star. Not just yet, Grimes kicks out, but you see the lack of enthusiasm off the shoulder being removed from the canvas. Somehow the matchup continues. LA Knight, not sure he was going for that time. Grimes countered, reversal there. That was just a disrespectful boot to the face. Now LA Knight in a rare state as he takes things to the top rope. And a drop in the missile, drop kick on Cameron Grimes. LA Knight clearly has had enough of the challenger's offense, has had enough of the challenger pushing this match to its absolute limit. LA Knight said, you want to play chess, I will play checkers and beat you at this game tonight. The Intercontinental Champion wearing down on the challenger at ringside where he has a good portion of this match. Last time did not work out so kindly. Just look at the other barricade. Right now, Knight. Oh my goodness, sending Cameron Grimes over the barricade this time. Grimes just landed right on the concrete. Ellie Knight could have been going for a count out. I don't know what the champion was going for. Maybe just frustrated, trying to get the challenger off his back. Nonetheless, back inside the ring. Oh, wait a minute. Ellie Knight got caught. Grimes cradles him up. And that went to the cover. The same maneuver that defeated LA Knight a few weeks ago. However, Knight's foot underneath the bottom rope and not even allowed to get that one count. Could have been a huge opportunity. Might have had a new champion had the result been different. Nonetheless, LA Knight with another reversal that time. And a signature elbow. Many have compared LA Knight to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Many have compared him to The Rock. Two great comparisons, if you ask me. And LA Knight giving his little bit of a version of a people's elbow. You can call it the Megastar elbow. Cameron Grimes needs to get back into this matchup now or never because LA Knight is stacking up not just any offense, signature offense, and the challenger is wary. Wait a minute. Surprise victory here, not just yet. Close call by Cameron Grimes, who charges at the challenger. And now Grimes heading back to the top rope. You can tell the desperation in Cameron Grimes right now, trying any means necessary. Not getting the land he so hoped as LA Knight shaking the ropes a little that time. And a backdrop simple yet effective going old school in Motown. And now Knight with his eyes locked. Oh, could be going for a little air raid crash. And he may not need a blood force trauma for victory tonight. LA Knight's got more than one tool in the arsenal to beat you. And he just proved that here in Detroit with an air raid crash victory to his challenger, Cameron Grimes. Well, at the end of the day, Grimes may not be leaving with the Intercontinental Championship, but certainly finds himself in a new position on Monday Night Raw. Live to fight another day, absolutely, but the championship remains with the Megastar. 
Here is your winner, and still WWE Intercontinental Champion, LA Knight. You very well could be looking at the breakout superstar of 2023, winning the Intercontinental Championship back in July and has retained it ever since. And that is a picture that we have become very familiar with. One of the faces of Monday Night Raw. And still, your Intercontinental Champion here tonight, the Megastar, L.A. Knight. Well, coming up next here at Armageddon, the WWE Women's Championship from Monday Night Raw is on the line as the Nightmare Rhea Ripley defends the gold against Raw's hottest acquisition, Alba Fire. And we're going to take you back to three weeks ago when Alba Fire accepted the open challenge from Blair Davenport, impressing in her Monday Night Raw debut. A victory for Fire caught the attention of Rhea Ripley, who marched down the aisle with the Women's Championship on her shoulder just to remind Alba Fire whose division she was stepping into. This face-to-face -face confrontation catching the eye of Monday Night Raw management, and Alba Fire finds herself tonight with a huge opportunity just weeks removed from her Monday Night Raw debut. Imagine debuting on Monday Night Raw. Three weeks later, you find yourself in a WWE Women's Championship match against one of the most feared and dominating women in WWE history. That is what Alba Fire finds herself in tonight. And the stakes couldn't be any higher for this young woman. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. A former NXT Women's United Kingdom Champion former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion as well, so she knows what it's like to have gold around her waist in the WWE. But it certainly does not get any bigger than making your debut in the flagship program and going straight to the top, fighting the nightmare, the eradicator of the Judgment Day, the WWE Women's Champion Rhea Ripley, weeks removed I'll bite from Rhea retaining her gold in Madison Square Garden in an Extreme Rules match against the man Becky Lynch. Fire has certainly got a uphill battle ahead of her tonight. But man, oh man, is it gonna be a night to remember, a career-defining night for Alba Fire, if somehow, some way, she can find a way to gain victory. Not only did she gain a victory over Blair Davenport three weeks ago, was able to score one off the veteran, the Queen of Hearts, Natalia, just a few nights ago on Monday Night Raw as well. But can she ride that momentum into a championship victory here tonight against this oh-so-dominating champion? And business just picked up in Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. The Nightmare, the Eradicator of the Judgment Day, and the WWE Women's Champion. There is a cold heart behind those eyes of Rhea Ripley, winning the championship by cashing in money in the bank back in September, taking down the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. Rhea has retained the gold not once but twice over Becky Lynch, as we mentioned three weeks ago in the Garden, and then back in October in Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. Rhea has certainly made her mark in 2023, uniting the Judgment Day. Finn Balor, Damian Priest gonna have their opportunity to obtain gold once more later tonight, but right here, right now, Rhea Ripley has one more chance to leave her solidified mark in 2023. And I'll tell you what, Rhea was the one who marched down the aisle three weeks ago, told Alba Fire face to face just whose division it was on Raw, but imagine what Rhea Ripley's response is gonna be if she walks into this matchup tonight possibly takes Alba lightly and fire 
takes advantage. The landscape of Monday Night Raw could change before our very eyes. Will it be the newcomer Alba Fire or does the Eradicator live on to defend her championship? Introducing the challenger from Glasgow, Scotland, Alba Fire! And her opponent from Adelaide, Australia, she is the WWE Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley! Well, just like our opening matchup tonight, we have a championship match being decided in an international affair. And that women's championship World-renowned, held by Hall of Famers, legends of this business, and Rhea Ripley is looking to solidify her legacy as a legend of Monday Night Raw, continuing on here tonight. Alba Fire looking to spoil it. Fire's got the opportunity. Can she take advantage of the biggest match of her young career? We are underway with our third of eight championships being decided tonight in Motown, Detroit, Michigan, live at Armageddon. Right out the get-go, Rhea Ripley, the powerhouse, not only of the Judgment Day, not only of the women's division, but one of the strongest in all of WWE. Taking the fight to Alba Fire, and the interesting thing here is what is going to be the fight out of Alba Fire? Is the moment going to get to her? Will it be too much to handle? Is Rhea Ripley just about to stomp all over her challenger tonight and make an example out of the woman she stood down three weeks ago? Alba Fire can find her way back into this. Should be very interesting to see what fight she's got in her. Where is the confidence level of the challenger tonight? All remains to be seen right now. This is Rhea Ripley's show coming out hot since the opening bell. Ragdolling the number one contender literally from pillar to post. And a big boot right across the face. You know, one thing we were... Almost going to speculate on here. I got it in my notes. Was Rhea Ripley going to take Alba Fire almost lightly tonight? So far, it doesn't seem like that's the case. It has simply been a mugging. But here's Alba Fire trying to build some momentum in this matchup. Fire knows that, just like we said with Nathan Frazier earlier on tonight, championship opportunities don't come around every day. And especially being such a brand new acquisition to Raw, when could any other time does a... Fresh superstar joining the brand, get an opportunity just weeks out. Rhea Ripley, dare I say, maybe the face of the entire women's division in all of WWE, and that's no disrespect to Shayna Baszler over on SmackDown or anybody in the entire division, but Rhea Ripley has just made a statement in 2023. Alba Fire finds herself against possibly the face of the entire division. And looking to make the most of it right now, taking down the champion. Tell you what, if there's one thing we know about the Nightmare Rhea Ripley, it's one thing to take her off her feet. It's a whole other thing to keep her there and get the three count. Rhea found herself her back up against the wall in that Extreme Rules match numerous occasions three weeks ago at Survivor Series. Obviously survived with the gold and defeated Becky Lynch. Can she survive? Alba Fire right now, who's starting to build some fire in this matchup. I'll tell you what, Alba realizes the opportunity that's at stake. And being familiar with championship gold, as we mentioned. Looking to get that feeling back around the waist tonight as she sends Rhea Ripley over the top rope and could be looking to inflict some more punishment at ringside. Look at Alba go, unloading on the champion. We mentioned it before. And speculated on it, was Rhea Ripley going to take Alba Fire lightly tonight? We really haven't gotten an opportunity to see that play out, but if she was mentally, she may not be anymore because Alba has taken the fight to the champion. There's a reversal by the champion. Really, we should have mentioned this a moment ago, but Alba Fire wanting to take this fight to the outside may not be the best idea. Rhea already dominating as is. Now add the surroundings of ringside to her arsenal. The Eradicator may be more dangerous than ever. Back and forth we go right now as Rhea just trying to get the challenger off her neck. 
Rhea Ripley sending Alba Fire back inside the ring, and we mentioned moments ago as the Nightmare is walking down the aisle, but her boys in the Judgment Day, Damian Priest and Finn Balor, set to take on the Brawling Brutes later tonight. The Tornado Tag Team matchup for the WWE World Tag Team titles. Could be a banner night for the Judgment Day here at Armageddon, or it could all come crashing down. Remains to be seen. Rhea Ripley trying to start it out hot for the Judgment Day locker room. Alba Fire looking to play spoiler. Taking down Rhea Ripley again. He's got to try to find some offense, really mount some offense, I should say. Stack it up one piece at a time. Oh, wait a minute here. Hold that thought. Rhea Ripley, the powerhouse, ragged on the number one contender. And now looking to hum humiliate her in the middle of the ring. Stomping out the chest, or I should say the heart. Alba could have been looking for that swanton bomb that she has utilized to perfection since joining Monday Night Raw. However, Rhea Ripley did her homework on the woman she scouted three weeks ago. Alba trying to create some distance. And Rhea Ripley may be ruling the squared circle right now. A dominating presence is the nightmare as she charges at fire and once again sends her over the top rope. This is where Rhea Ripley wrestles her style of match. This is where Rhea Ripley just inflicts her dominance, brings her aura, and absolutely just kills the confidence of every opponent she steps into the ring with. Alba is feeling the fight firsthand. Boot right to the jaw. Down she goes, ragdolling the opponent. Rhea Ripley formed Judgment Day in 2023. She won Money in the Bank back in July, cashed it in successfully in September. But is all that momentum that Rhea has accomplished this year about to come to a screeching halt to the woman she called out in Alba Fire? Now, wait a minute. Alba looking to take things to the air. Look at that step up somersault over the top. Fire throwing caution in the wind, all in the means of championship success. And Rhea finding herself down and out momentarily. You know, it's a rare occurrence to see the champion call out her next challenger, but that is what Rhea Ripley technically did with Alba Fire. But has she bit off more than she could chew? Alba Fire certainly bringing the fight to this matchup, but so is the Eradicator. Count of six right now, and Rhea making her way back inside the ring. I'm sure the champion would be satisfied in a count out. Alba Fire needs the one, two, three, or a submission tonight. As she makes her way back inside the ring, that was a huge somersault plancha moments ago with the step up. However, Rhea Ripley looking to stop that momentum before it really gets rolling. And another boot, Rhea's just multiple times this matchup, whether it's to the face, to the heart, just trying to stomp out all the confidence and championship desires from Alba Fire. They have been undefeated since joining Raw. One victory over Blair Davenport, one over Natalia. Whole different ball game when you're in there with the Nightmare, as she is finding out firsthand. The strength, the size, the intimidation, just maybe too much to handle here at Armageddon. And there you see the fatigue starting to set in right into the ring post. Oh, wait a minute. A little bit of fire left in Alba, no pun intended. Dragon screw, Rhea Ripley down. Look at this, Alba still inflicting some more punishment. She might've got a handful of eye there, I'm not exactly sure. Referee letting it go, a little bit of leeway in the championship match. Alba fires just trying to take Rhea Ripley down and keep her there, but Again, that is such a hard thing to do when you're in there with a superstar caliber, caliber athlete like the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. Rhea's down, fires go to the top, and she may be thinking Swanton Bomb. That she is, and it delivers. New champion on the horizon. Not just yet, Rhea Ripley kicks out. And look how fast Rhea just got to her feet. That is intimidation. That is scary. How the hell did Rhea Ripley survive the Swanton Bomb and get to her feet in mere seconds? That
That is why they call her the Nightmare, as she has just flipped the switch on this match in mere moments. And Alba Fire's championship desires may have just gone up in smoke. The fire may be put out here at Armageddon. And Rhea Ripley completely turning this match on its head. And the Nightmare locked and loaded, more focused than ever, looking to eradicate Alba Fire with a riptide dead center of the canvas. Thanks for coming, Alba Fire. But Rhea Ripley is just on another level. Well, Rhea called her shot, and Fire gave her a run for her money. But Rhea was looking to make another statement tonight, solidifying herself at the top. And boy, did she ever. Here is your winner, and still WWE Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley making a case as not just the Women's Superstar of the Year, but possibly the most decorated and dominant superstar of 2023. The WWE Women's Championship remains with the nightmare. Rhea Ripley, and you gotta wonder who's next to fight the Eradicator. Well, tomorrow night is a very special Slammy Award presentation of Raw, and after LA Knight retained his Intercontinental Championship earlier tonight, he heads towards tomorrow night to defend the gold against Shinsuke Nakamura. And also tomorrow night, it's the Slammy Awards. Who is gonna take home the awards that were voted on by you, the fans? Let's take a look at some of the nominees for the Men's Superstar of the Year. Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, the World Heavyweight Champion, Gunther, the WWE Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. What about who is up for the Women's Superstar of the Year? You got the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, the man, Becky Lynch, the WWE Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley, the Women's World Champion from SmackDown, Shayna Baszler, one of my personal favorite categories, the breakout superstar of the year. Who made the most impact upon their first year here in WWE? You got Braun Breaker, Ilya Dragunov, LA Knight, and the street champ, Solo Sokoa. What about the tag team superstar of the year? You got the Brawling Brutes, DIY, who had an early impact in 2023. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn from the Red Brand, and of course, the Judgment Day. And look at those two teams who are from pillar to post right on your screen right now, the Brawling Brutes and the Judgment Day. They have been there, I say, the tag team feud of the year, and they are set to write their next chapter. Coming up next, it is a Tornado Tag Team Rules match. All four men can be in the ring at the same time. One pinfall or submission to a finish for the World Tag Team Championships. Who's going home with the gold? Heading into the Slammies tomorrow night with the award on the line. It is our fourth championship match here at the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. And as we mentioned, we are set to write the next chapter of what has been a storied rivalry between the Judgment Day and the Brawling Brutes. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, the former WWE World Tag Team Champions, who have been itching since they lost the gold back in September for an attempt to get them back. Judgment Day and Brutes, they have been intertwined damn near all year long. Remember back to one of their first meetings was at Vengeance back in May, alongside Sheamus and Seth Rollins in a six-man tag team matchup. And we just talked about moments ago, the Judgment Day former World Tag Team Champions. Well, they initially had to become number one contenders. Who did they beat back in the month of June? Well, that would be Butch and Ridge Holland. Those two teams stayed intertwined until the Brawling Brutes eventually earned themselves the number one contendership, took down Finn Balor and Damian Priest back at Unforgiven, and have held the gold ever since. Priest and Balor had some bad luck in the road, some storied matches with Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods of the New Day on Monday Night Raw. But after a knockdown drag out battle with the New Day a few weeks ago, the Judgment Day earning this opportunity and finally getting another crack at Butch and Ridge Holland with the WWE World Tag Team Championship on the line. And after all the encounters this year, the Tornado Tag Team rules in play. All four men in the ring at one time, I got a feeling the favorites in that situation 
might be the two men who thrive for a fight. Ridge the Fridge, the Bruiserweight Butch, the Brawling Brutes are in the house. The World Tag Team Championships are around their waist as well. They've been victorious over the Judgment Day. Retain the gold over Pretty Deadly, Legato del Fantasma. But tonight, stepping back into the ring with their old foes, and this should be a very interesting encounter as our fourth championship is set to be defended here at Armageddon. And you saw the four teams that were the nominees for the Tag Team of the Year. Moments ago, we will find out who won. Fan voted by you tomorrow night at the Slammy Awards. Very well could be the Brawling Brutes or the Judgment Day. Or could it be DIY who had an early impact in the tag team division first half of 2023. Maybe Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. All remains to be seen tomorrow night. But first, some business to take care of live here at Armageddon. The following contest is a Tornado Tag Team Match. And is for the World Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 439 pounds. Finn Balor and Damian Priest. The Judgment Day. And their opponents at a combined weight of 458 pounds. They are the World Tag Team Champions, Ridge Holland and Butch, the Brawling Brutes. Well, they call it a Tornado Tag Team matchup because all the men are legal at one time and with so many moving parts, you can expect nothing but chaos the second that bell sounds. And that is the gold that is at stake. The WWE World Tag Team Champion. Championships, excuse me. Judgment Day have had a reign. The Brawling Brutes in the midst of theirs. But who will leave Little Caesars Arena with the gold? The bell sounds and we are underway. And as we just said, expect nothing but chaos as all four men are in the ring at one time. No count outs in this matchup. And this match can only be coming to a conclusion by a pinfall or submission. Qualification as well, but just because there's four men in the ring doesn't mean double of those decisions, if you will. One fall, one tap out, all we need tonight to determine the World Tag Team Champions. I'll tell you what, the polls for the Slammy Awards may have closed on Friday, but if they didn't, the winner of this matchup may be getting an extra boost from the WWE Universe. Or remains to be seen who's going to be the Tag Team Superstar, Tag Team of the Year, we should say, recognized by you, the fans, tomorrow night. On Monday Night Raw, meanwhile, Damian Priest going for the pinfall there, not just yet. That's the thing about this matchup. Usually, when you have your opponent on the apron, it's fairly easy to get inside the ring and break up a pinfall when you need to, but when you're in there fighting the battle alongside your partner at one time, you know, your back may be turned for those three seconds, and that's all it takes to determine tag team champions tonight. Both teams are going to have to have their heads on a swivel, eyes in the back of their head, and hope for the best. It's really all you can do. These kind of matches, very unpredictable. Butch going after Damian Priest, going for the pinfall as Balor took out Ridge, and that time you see Balor able to get the break up here. There's another interesting situation as we just observed moments ago. Ridge was out of the ring, and it's a rare occurrence in a tag team match where it becomes a handicap that's actually legal. You knock out one opponent, well, you could legally have two men beaten down on the other. It could be a bad day for that opposing tag team. At the end of the day, not to sound like a broken record, but it's really unpredictable. It all remains to be seen. This may come down to just a test of endurance, and really, who has the best luck in this Tornado Tag Team Rules match? As Finn Balor, over the top rope, take it out, Butch. Fowler and Butch, those two men have had singles encounters even outside of their two tag teams and have absolutely tore down the house time after time, even dating back to 2022 over the Intercontinental Championship. And, you know, we talked about Fowler and Priest and some of the bad luck they had ever since losing the tag team titles to the Brawling Brutes. They recently turned it around in those encounters with the New Day. And credit where credit's due, Balor and Priest tearing down the house on Monday Night Raw a few weeks ago. Possibly one of my favorite tag team matches of the year with Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. 
The victory that propelled them to this matchup here tonight as Butch comes soaring off the apron with the knee. Meanwhile, Damian Priest corners Ridge Holland. Do the best we can to keep up with the action. As the World Tag Team titles are on the line and Butch dropping Balor face first on the apron. Things are breaking down into a brawl. No pun intended. Meanwhile, Priest looking to score the tag team titles not just yet. You know, we'll see the third member of the Brawling Brute, Sheamus, in action in your main event when that Hell in the Cell structure lowers. Certainly tonight of all nights, one that can be marked on the calendar as a super fight night for the Brawling Brutes. Win, lose, or draw for all of those men. I'm sure a couple of pints are going to be served as they exit Armageddon tonight on their way to Monday Night Raw tomorrow. Now the opponent's switching off momentarily. Ridge Holland going after Finn Priest, sending a battered and bruised bruiserweight inside of the ring. Could be going for a south of heaven. Armageddon, a battle between good and evil, and Damian Priest looking to bring the hell upon the bruiserweight. Ridge Holland with other plans. Look at the strength of the big man. Down goes the Archer of Infamy. There's no small man himself, and the tag team champions ruling the ring temporarily. You're not really dra draping your success for too long in this matchup, especially with, again, the unpredictability of this stipulation here tonight. Damian Priest tried to rush the ring. Clearly, that didn't work out for him. Maybe it's going to work better for the Prince Finn Balor. And here we go. The Judgment Day starting to turn the tables, much to the disdain, of this crowd here at Little Caesars Arena. So far, so good. It's a solid night for the Judgment Day with Rhea Ripley retaining her title. Will Bauer and Priest bring home some gold? There's a kick out by the Bruiserweight. It was one small night in time between No Mercy and Unforgiven, the back-to-back -back SmackDown and Raw exclusive live premiere events back in September where Rhea Ripley was the women's champion and the Judgment Day were tag team champions. That was moments until the Brawling Brutes, of course, expired their reign with the titles. We could be going back in time tonight with the Judgment Day holding all the gold. All remains to be seen. It's all four men now on the outside and Finn Balor maybe in the streets of Detroit. Ridge Holland sending up for an amusement park ride. And Butch doing the same to Damian Priest off that monkey flip. Man, tag team partners really fueling each other tonight. Adrenaline pumping through all four of these men. Rolling Brutes stood tall, then the Judgment Day took the ring, and now Butch and Ridge Holland, the successors in this fight at ringside right now. Damian Priest coming in contact with that steel ring post. Meanwhile, Balor delivering double boots to the side of the dome of Ridge the Fridge. Butch finding himself in a handicap momentarily, but he probably put 30 men against the Bruiserweight. He's going to keep swinging until there's no tomorrow. Getting a little crowded here at ringside. All four of these men might, might want to separate here. Fist might start flying. You might accidentally inadvertently hit your opponent, or I should say your partner. Nonetheless, back inside the ring. Wait a minute, Butch. Oh, could have been going for that inverted suplex. Priest had it countered. Now Bauer from behind. There is no love lost between these four men. Tag team championships have been waged war between them time and time again. Here we are tonight at Armageddon. As we mentioned before, we'll say it again right in the next chapter of what has been a storied rivalry on Monday Night Raw. South of heaven making a dose. And that may do it. New tag team champions, here we go. And Butch getting the shoulder up. And luckily, even if he didn't, I think Ridge the Fridge might have made it in time. And down goes Priest. And while Bauer's out, might be a good time to try to retain the titles. But Bauer back inside the ring. Well, now Butch going for the cover on Priest as Finn takes out Ridge Holland. And here we go again. So much action to keep up with in this matchup. And I expected nothing less as Butch comes soaring off the apron. Tell you what, Butch himself has had a hell of a year in 2023. Entered as the Intercontinental Champion. Became a member of Brawling Brutes. Winning the tag team titles alongside Ridge the Fridge Holland. 
After that overhead throw, the titles may remain, not just yet. Finn Balor able to survive momentarily. Butch throwing some wild strikes. That time hits Damian Priest. Now they make double team Damian Priest here. Finn Balor trying to intervene to no avail. Once again, the momentum lies with the Bruiserweight and Holland. And I think this is the best strategy that we may have seen throughout this matchup, in inverted or not. Try to separate the tag team partners. Make things a one-on-one -on -one match inside of the ring. Take the other fight to the outside. Create some distance. Well, there's so much chaos in one area, whether it be the ring or a ringside. It's really missing an opportunity to possibly single out an opponent. Really backing yourself up against the wall for an inverted strike. A lot can happen in the midst of this kind of chaotic matchup. Nonetheless, wait a minute. Damian Priest off the reversal here. Could have been going for a razor's edge. Delivers it. And Ridge Holland taking out Balor at ringside. Luckily had his eye on the Archer of Infamy and not going to allow any sort of pinfall that time. And now Balor back into the ring. And back we go. 2v2 swing blade on Holland. Now Butch interfering. Rolling Brutes had the momentum, not looking to hand it back on a silver platter to the Judgment Day in this matchup. As Holland once again showcasing his strength in the middle of Motown. Detroit Rock City's been, no pun intended, to rock it all night long. And how could you not? Sold out for weeks, nothing but championship. Matches on the card, high stakes, high reward, and Ridge Holland laying out Balor momentarily. Not sure what he had in mind there. Could have gone for the cover. Instead, Alex against it. There is a split of difference in the momentum inside of that ring right now. Wait a minute, hold that thought as Butch goes to the outside and Priest sneak it up on Holland. And these four men will fight till the cows come home, especially Butch and Ridge Holland. Who's gonna get the last laugh tonight? All remains to be seen as Ridge is getting singled out right now and dropped right on the crown of his head. And Damian Priest not done, inflicting punishment. Submission hold locked in, a sleeper of sorts. Holland the big man, seeing the life squeezed out of him. Meanwhile, Bauer looking to take out the bruiserweight with no help. Oh no, Bauer going for a bloody Sunday on this Armageddon. And into the cover, Ridge Helen escapes Priest. Wait a minute, it's too late. Balor pins the bruiser away. Wow. We got new world tag team champions as the chaos comes to a screeching halt and the Judgment Day find a window of opportunity to capitalize on. Here are your winners, Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Damian Priest taking out Ridge Holland, neutralizing him momentarily. Finn Balor putting the exclamation point on the Bruiserweight. And the Judgment Day are walking out of Lizard, Little Caesars Arena with all the gold. Balor, Priest, writing the next chapter in a successful manner in their war with the Brawling Brutes, leaving as the new World Tag Team Champion. The next time we come your way for a live premiere event, we kick off 2024 as the road to WrestleMania begins. Sunday night, January the 7th, we come to you from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada for the 2024 Royal Rumble. What will happen at one of the most anticipated events of the year? A night where 15 Raw and 15 SmackDown superstars battle it out for a chance to main event WrestleMania. Join us live Sunday night, January the 7th, 2024 for the Royal Rumble. Time is now to become part of something bigger than yourself. A force that will change the game. Do I have everybody's, everybody's attention, attention now? now. There's nothing I could do.
Well, I don't think the news gets any bigger than that. Live Sunday night, January the 7th, 2024 at the Royal Rumble. The best in the world, CM Punk is back. T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada will feature the return of a former WWE Champion, the best in the world, CM Punk. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States Championship. Man, what a night this has been here in Little Caesars Arena. Detroit, Michigan has been rocking all night long, but it's time to kick off the second half of your final live premiere event of 2023. Some action coming our way, courtesy of Friday Night SmackDown. And the championship aspirations just keep on rolling forward. The United States Championship is on the line. And the greatest mask of all time, the master of the 619, Rey Mysterio, looking to add another accolade to his already Hall of Fame career. Mysterio takes on the phenomenal AJ Styles, a man he had a run-in with last month at Saturday night's main event. It did not go the way of Mysterio on that night in Milwaukee. Will the result be any different tonight in D-Town when the championship is on the line? AJ Styles, like him or not, has been red hot over the last month and change, an attitude change. Gallows and Anderson by his side, and now with the red, white, and gold around his waist, AJ Styles, not only phenomenal, but just on another level right now. AJ Styles may have an attitude change, and the atmosphere changes when the original club walks down the aisle. Like him or not, those are three intimidating men world traveled veterans and now gold around the waist of the head honcho aj styles taken down cody rhodes three weeks ago in madison square garden at survivor series retaining it just mere days later against the american nightmare in a steel cage matchup and what about what happened 48 hours ago i'll bite pushed to the limit by santos escobar but a victory nonetheless by the man holding the red white blue and gold but tonight, another championship defense for AJ Styles. And with his attention on Cody Rhodes a few weeks ago and having to quickly turn his attention to Rey Mysterio, the target on the back of the champion. Will Rey Mysterio take advantage of this opportunity tonight or is AJ Styles' momentum just riding at an all-time high? Let's send things down to the ring. Introducing the challenger from San Diego, California, weighing in at 175 pounds, Rey Mysterio! And his opponent, from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, he is the WWE United States Champion, the phenomenal AJ! Well, here we go. It is the second championship defense in the United States championship reign of the phenomenal AJ Styles. And will he be handing over that gold for the very last time as Rey Mysterio gets an eye on the prize and certainly some last-minute motivation for the Hall of Famer. Fifth championship being defended of eight here tonight. This one courtesy of the blue brand, Friday Night SmackDown. The competition has been hot and heavy. New tag team champions moments ago, but here we go. Mysterio, hot out of the gate, dropping Styles right on his crown. Quick victory, will it do it? Not just yet. Man, everybody highly motivated to get out of the gate early tonight. 
No waste in motion by a lot of the champions and challengers competing here at Armageddon. And Mysterio keeping up the pace. Here he goes to Toro DDT. Mysterio, I'm sure, has watched back the tape from Saturday night's main event back in November the 4th in Milwaukee. Mysterio came up short to AJ Styles on that night, which is really a win that helped propel AJ Styles to number one contendership at Survivor Series. Mysterio now wants the same opportunity, wants the gold around his waist. Look at Mysterio go! Into the cover again! Not just yet, AJ's still into this thing, but you can't tell me AJ Styles isn't already feeling the punishment by the master of the 619. Mysterio coming in with a game plan, looking to execute it to perfection. Knock the OC's leader off his game. Now Rey Mysterio going behind, and you don't want to get into a technical matchup with the world-traveled veteran, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Styles very vast in taking things to the air, a technical wrestler, mat-based at times as well. Styles is really a complete superstar from bell to bell, one of the reasons why we call him the phenomenal one. One of the reasons why he is the United States Champion today, the Mysterio a Hall of Famer. And it's because of reasons like you just saw, hot out of the gate, surprising his opponents over the years. May not be the biggest dog in the fight, but he certainly has the biggest heart and the biggest dog. And now AJ Styles over the top rope, taking down Rey Mysterio. And that may be a knockout blow in early rounds. AJ not done, continuing to inflict some punishment, trying to wear down Mysterio on ringside. Rey Mysterio might have had his lights turned off moments ago off that forearm, but there's the heart of Rey, gonna keep fighting until he hears a bell. You saw him in your picture there, the X-Factors at ringside, Gallows and Anderson, and there's a very good chance Styles would have came up short to Santos Escobar 48 hours ago if it wasn't for Machine Gun Carl Anderson sticking his nose in that matchup time and time again. Nonetheless, we are here. This is the now, and Mysterio is the one. Nobody watching his back tonight, coming into this match in a respectable manner. AJ Styles gave up all that, only worried about himself and his championship around his waist. Ray nonetheless gonna keep fighting, wants the title. Making his luggage a little bit more heavier on his route out of Detroit tonight. Look at Ray, just all over Styles. No repeat offense, just going to the fight with a little bit of everything. Taking things to the air, DDTs. Mysterio so vast, just as AJ Styles is. You know, when Styles is vast, and as we were talked about, almost different styles, no pun intended, inside of the ring. Mysterio, so many different ways to strike from the air. Nonetheless, Mysterio back to his feet, and AJ Styles better keep his eye on the ball here. And Mysterio will take advantage of a window of opportunity. Certainly no way to take advantage when you got two boots coming at you. Head on, and AJ Styles, once again, if they weren't already, turning the lights off on Rey Mysterio. Mysterio already a Hall of Famer. Nothing left to prove, but everything to gain here tonight. Mysterio wants to keep going until the wheels fall off. The United States Championship is on the line. Has met AJ Styles before, but can he get it done? This isn't the first meeting over the years. And wait a minute, hold that thought. Covered by Styles as Mysterio gets the shoulder up. He's still in this thing. You see the frustration out of AJ, and as I was about to mention, this is not the first time Styles and Ray have met over the years, specifically for the United States Championship. You go back to 2019, Mysterio defeated Styles for the red, white, blue, and gold. So familiar situation for both of these men tonight. However, AJ's looking for a different result. Maybe Styles is questioning whether the circumstances are in his favor, knowing that all those years ago, Mysterio was able to get the victory when the title was on the line. Hence the frustration moments ago by the phenomenal one. Nonetheless, Mysterio back into this matchup, but can he keep the wave on his side? As he gets Styles into the corner, and Ray loves to not only hoist his opponent to the top rope, but to meet him there. And look at this creative offense, and rolls Styles up into the pinfall. And he almost had him. May not have got the three count, but listen up. 
Detroit, Michigan coming unglued in appreciation for the efforts by Mysterio and, of course, the champion AJ Styles. But I think especially Ray. Nonetheless, AJ Styles on the outside. Mysterio going for the crossbody, but Styles' positioning helped him that time. Ray crashing and burning. They'll call it high risk, high reward for nothing. And Ray, unfortunately, giving AJ Styles a clear cut shot at the momentum in this match. Styles, usually we say saved by the ropes, and this time saved by his position on the outside, and now a burning hammer. Man, Rey Mysterio is really battling a knockout tonight. AJ Styles is looking for that KO blow. Oh no, not a Saido on the outside. Man, what's with the ringside area tonight? Everybody's throwing their toughest shots when it's gonna add just a little bit more pressure. Now AJ bringing this thing back into the ring and could be looking to bring this match up to a close. Off the neck breaker on the knee. Not going for the cover just yet. Maybe that's because Ray's feet, as you can see, placed underneath the bottom ropes. Not intentionally, I'm sure, but in the favor of Ray that time. And the less Styles picking Ray back up to his feet. Float over under the bridge. Looks not to go for the pinfall. Going to the outside, and I think we know what Styles has in mind here. Phenomenal forearm. Nobody home. Mysterio off the counter. And now Ray. Send it, AJ, to the ropes. Dial up the cell phones because we are hitting the 619. Springboard. Frog splash. We're going to have a new champion into the cover. Not just yet. AJ Styles kicks out. You don't get any closer than that. 619 springboard frog splash combination. Unfortunately for Mysterio, the phenomenal one is still in it. AJ on the outside. Gowers and Anderson looming ominously. But right, not going to give up. Tope Suicida into a tornado DDT. Mysterio pulling out all the stops tonight to leave 2023 with championship gold around his waist in a hurricane. Man, what a maneuver by Ray. You know, you want to talk about championship gold for Ray this year. January the 1st at the Royal Rumble, he won the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh, wait a minute. Hold that thought. Luke Gallows up on the apron, distracting Mysterio, and Styles looking to take advantage. Absolutely ridiculous. Those distractions aided Styles in victory on SmackDown, and it may be a repeat here tonight at Armageddon. Mysterio locked in the clutches of the champion. The ropes are near, but Mysterio may be in too much anguish to reach out. There's a reversal. Got to take advantage, however. Scales the ropes. Drop kick for a second time. And Mysterio found himself up against the wall. But as we mentioned, being a champion in 2023 already, held the Cruiserweight title for damn near half the year. Can he leave 2023 with the United States title? Not if Styles has anything to say about it. And this match starting to hit another level. The competition at an all-time high all across the board tonight at Armageddon. Speaks volumes to the championships that are on the line and what they mean to each and every one of these superstars, whether you come from Raw or SmackDown. And Styles hits the frog splash from the top. Mysterio, barely able to get the shoulder up. That was 2.9. Oh no, Ray might be better off staying down because Styles has got his eyes locked and he could be looking to deliver an emphatic Styles Clash. The maneuver that won him the championship three weeks ago retained him the title tonight at Armageddon. A great effort by Ray Mysterio. Left nothing left to give in this matchup. No stone unturned for the master of the 619, but ultimately, the phenomenal AJ Styles, like him or not, just on another level right now. Really living up to the phenomenal one nickname and retaining his United States Championship here tonight in Detroit. Here is your winner.
AJ Styles continuing to raise his stock all over again on Friday Night SmackDown. An attitude shift has led to success time and time again. And once again tonight, AJ Styles is leaving the building with the red, white, blue, and gold over his shoulder. Still the United States Champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Well, coming up next here at Armageddon, the Women's World Championship is on the line as Shayna Baszler defends for the very first time against the EST, Bianca Belair. And there is some history between these two women dating back to the month of October in London, England. Baszler took on Bianca Belair in a one-on-one -on -one qualifying matchup for Survivor Series. And as you can see here, the fight spilling to ringside where Shayna Baszler took advantage, laid out Bianca Belair up against the barricade, momentarily knocking her loose. Shayna Baszler was able to get this victory via countout. And not only was it a victory, but a win that propelled Baszler onto Survivor Series to challenge for the Women's World Championship four-way matchup. And then just three weeks ago in Madison Square Garden, Raquel Rodriguez eliminated Candice LeRae, EO Sky. It came down to Raquel and Baszler. And unfortunately for Raquel, her luck in this four-woman matchup ran out as she was locked in the Carafuda clutch. And Shayna Baszler left New York City, the first of its kind, women's world champion. Well, just a few nights later on Friday Night SmackDown, Bianca Belair returned to action hell-bent on victory as she went one-on-one -on -one with the genius of the sky herself. A great performance by both women and absolutely nothing to be ashamed of in defeat for Io Sky, but Bianca was just focused and determined. A KOD, a kiss of death, led her to victory and propelled her in the number one contendership that she can capitalize on here tonight at Armageddon. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Women's World Championship. The championship matches roll on and Friday Night SmackDown's portion of the women's division is on display. The Women's World Championship, brand new to the blue brand and the first holder, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. But the result of Survivor Series may have been just a little different had the EST had her way back in October in London, England. But tonight, a chance to right that wrong in the mind of Bianca as she takes on Shayna Baszler. One on one tonight with the championship on the line. And you gotta wonder if Baszler is going to look to get into the psyche of Bianca and aim for a count out victory. Or is she gonna go to the well with what Baszler does best? those strikes and those submission holds. At the end of the day, Bianca Belair with a strong suit of her own, both mentally and physically. One of the strongest in the women's division, one of the toughest, fastest, and one of the top stars on Friday Night SmackDown today. But it all comes down to moments like tonight. Live forever, change your career for the foreseeable future, and leave with the Women's World Championship. That is what hangs in the balance between these two competitive women. Bianca Belair looks focused, but I can't remember a day where the Queen of Spades walked down the aisle with anything but focus in her eyes. And that is the reason that Baszler was a nominee for the Women's Superstar of the Year. And whether she won or not, we'll find out tomorrow night on the Slammy Award edition of Raw. But Baszler has had one hell of a 2023 winning the WWE Women's Championship back in June. Only lost to VA Money in the Bank cash-in from Rhea Ripley back at No Mercy. And then when the championship was elected to exclusively be on Raw, the Women's World Championship introduced to SmackDown. Talk about capitalizing on the opportunity. You want to talk about righting wrongs. Well, Baszler wrote the wrong in her mind after she lost the WWE Women's Championship at No Mercy, waltzed into Survivor Series three weeks ago, and left with a very new piece of hardware around her waist. Nonetheless, that was then, this is now. The past is the past. It's time to create new history here tonight in Detroit. The first Women's World Championship defense, Baszler, Bianca, one-on-one. -on -one. 
Introducing the challenger from Knoxville, Tennessee, Bianca Belair. And her opponent from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, she is the WWE Women's World Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna. Certainly a big fight feel on behalf of Friday Night SmackDown. The Women's World Championship, as we mentioned, its very first defense in its brand new lineage. Bianca Blair taking a look at the gold that she could very well be leaving with here tonight. Former WWE Women's Champion in her own right. And earlier this year, before they were temporarily retired, the Women's Tag Team Championship partly reside with Bianca Belair. But here we go, the matchup is underway and Baszler hot out of the gate. Shayna Baszler again, you gotta wonder if she's gonna be looking for a count out victory tonight. And wait a minute, there you go, sending Bianca Belair to the outside and not following her. And obviously Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, smarter than that, knows she's not gonna get the count out right off the get go here. But I think that was a little reminder to Bianca Belair what happened several weeks ago in London, England. Baszler playing some mind games in the early going of this matchup and now looking to inflict some damage on the EST. Bianca's been waiting for this moment since London, England back in October. Smackdown Halloween. And Baszler, no matter the, compo no matter the opponent here tonight, was probably gonna come out swinging either way. That we know about the champion. I expect a very Highly competitive matchup, just as every championship match tonight has been. Look at Baszler. Talking about Bianca Blair being one of the strongest in the division. There's Shayna showing that she's got more tools to the trade in her belt. Earlier tonight, Rhea Ripley of Monday Night Raw retaining her WWE Women's Championship over the newcomer to the red brand, Alba Fire. Great contest there. Got a feeling we are going to be in for another one this time on behalf of the Friday Night SmackDown brand. And as this matchup progresses, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw, the 2023 Slammy Awards. Your votes have been casted over the last few weeks. Polls officially closed. The results will be revealed live tomorrow night on Raw. Bianca Belair going to get some offense for the first time in this matchup. Here's Shayna Baszler. Well documented, obviously, with that count out history against Bianca Belair, but she has got that champion's advantage tonight. Baszler can win this matchup and retain her title via count out. Bianca Belair does not have those pleasantries, if you will. Gotta pin Shayna Baszler inside the ring or make her submit to leave with the gold. Big time spear cutting Baszler in half, certainly gonna aid Bianca in doing just that. And now look out, because the EST soaring through the air. Bianca Belair, so agile and so hungry for victory, willing to risk it all to leave Armageddon as the women's world champion. And Bianca throwing some tough strikes that time. And Shayna gonna meet her. I don't know if you wanna brawl with the Queen of Spades. Shayna Baszler known for her map-based wrestling, her submission techniques. But she is a former MMA fighter. That background in her, willing to throw down and scrap with the best of them. And Baszler back inside the ring. The referee's at a count of six. Shayna Baszler looking to retain her championship via count out tonight. Well, she may again just realize that Bianca Belair is not gonna stay down just yet, but just trying to get into the mind of Bianca Belair and cost her to make a mistake which she may have done that time rushing into the ring and fell right into the waiting arms of the champion. And I'll tell you what, we're bringing up one side of the coin with Shayna Baszler playing the mind games against Bianca Belair with the countouts, but what about the other side of the coin? Maybe Shayna Baszler is trying to get that countout victory that she got back in October in London, England, because maybe something deep down, Shayna Baszler believes maybe she can't beat Bianca Belair. I mean, that's just me going off the cuff here. I don't have any word from Baszler or Bianca on that, but that is something to think about when we talk about the storylines in this matchup. 
Nonetheless, we're going to get an answer tonight on who's the better woman, who's worthy of being the champion, and who can truly defeat who. Shayna may have that championship advantage, but that may only make the EST more hungry than ever for victory. Nonetheless, Bianca Belair has shown some signs of life here or there, but this has pretty much been a dominant performance thus far by the Women's World Champion. Yeah, we gotta stop saying that. I feel like every time we say that, we almost jinx the person that's got the momentum. But hey, Bianca Belair showing some signs of life, and I'm all for it. There's Bianca Ragdoll in that time. The Queen of Spades over the top. Over the top, down to the canvas. The excitement's getting the best of us here. As Bianca charges Baszler, that was a rookie mistake. And again that time. Hell, I guess they persisted if you believe it. Oh, but again, she might have fell right into the waiting arms of the women's champion who sends her right into the barricade. And again, second time. Now going third time at Charm. Oh, wait a minute, hanging her up. Oh, and a boot to the side of the dome, right to the temple of the EST. That'll knock you out for darn sure as Shayna Baszler now. Look at this, making a mockery of her challenger at ringside. And notice once more how all this offense for Baszler is taking place on the outside of the ropes. And Baszler confident in her pursuit right now. Referee's at a count of six. Shayna Baszler is not done. Well, she could have been going for the count out once more and this time sends her back inside the ring. Referee was at a count of seven there. I mean, Baszler, she might have knocked Bianca one more time or two. Bianca might not have been able to make it in for the 10, but nonetheless, we're back inside the ring. I don't want to question the strategy of the champion because she's obviously been pretty dominant throughout 2023 for a reason. And the cover again, and Bianca Belair gets the shoulder up. Shayna Baszler continuing to control the majority of this match. Bianca has shown some glimmers of hope here and there. And there's again a reversal by Bianca. We're gonna crack a rib of Shayna inside of the corner. And other boots from one of the strongest, fastest, most agile stars in the entire women's division today. Former champion in her own right. I'll tell you what though, Bianca Blair hasn't held a singles championship since the summer of 2022. And I'm sure the EST as we said time and time again throughout this matchup already, more hungry than ever to leave Armageddon with some gold. And here comes Bianca. There's some mean Larry at that time, sending Shayna into the corner, and you see the champion's bell may be wrong. I'll tell you what, this is the pace that I think Bianca's got to keep up. Shayna Baszler not one to rush her offense inside of the ring. If Bianca Belair, my goodness! can keep the foot on the gas pedal. She may be the favorite to win this matchup. Not getting the three that time, but you can't tell me some damage hasn't been done. And now Bianca looking to show her best attribute, the strength, the size, muscling up Baszler. High in the sky of Motown and face first off the canvas goes the women's world champion. And I'm going for a repeat, trying to knock the win out of the Queen of Spades. And down she goes again. Bianca Belair confident in her offense. As Baszler rolls to the outside and in the sky again goes the EST. Bianca willing to risk it all. What in that Women's World Championship as an early holiday gift tonight. Sending Baszler back inside. Bianca heading to the top. Dropping the elbow on the spine of Baszler. Blair has won many a matches in years past with that elbow drop. If you go back in the history books, she's done it time and time again. But tonight, not the same result. Shayna Baszler kicking out, but Bianca Belair really pushing the pace for a few moments there. May have surprised Shayna Baszler. Baszler may have her back up against the wall this time. Now Bianca going for a scoop and a slam. There's a counter. Shayna, big time German, dropping Bianca on the back of her neck. Big time reversal there. And a nice throw and a nice drop to the arm. And Shayna could be looking to soften up Bianca for that Karafuda clutch. 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Big time counter. Bianca, dead center of the ring. Kiss of death. A KOD out of nowhere. Stopping the comeback of Baszler. Dead in its tracks to win the title. Not just yet. Baszler's alive. Man, what a reversal by Bianca. It doesn't get closer than that. Little Caesars Arena, Detroit, Michigan, coming to their feet for the championship pursuit of these two women. Shayna Baszler was trying to mount a comeback there. Bianca Belair stopped it as fast as she could. KOD out of nowhere, middle of the ring. Unfortunately for Bianca, Shayna Baszler still a fighting champion at the current moment. Ragdolling her challenger off the top. And now Baszler's not done. Could be looking to bring this thing to a close. Muscling up her challenger, face first off the canvas. A signature maneuver out of the Queen of Spades. But Bianca's still alive. Oh man, you see Baszler starting to get frustrated. The last time she fought Bianca Belair, it did not go the distance like this match is beginning to. Shayna may have to resort to the count out that gave her the victory back in London, England. But from the UK all the way to Detroit, the championship journey of these two women. Who was going to close that journey here tonight at Armageddon? Nice counter by Bianca. Pendulum momentum starting to swing back and forth in this matchup as Shayna Baszler needs the ropes just to get to her feet. And Bianca muscling the champion over the top rope. Bianca Belair looking to get hers tonight. Wants the Women's World Championship around her waist upon her exit from Little Caesars Arena. And the mean streak coming out of the EST. Shayna Baszler is obviously hurt on the outside of the ring. The fight continues at ringside. Remember, Bianca Belair cannot win the title via countout. She heads back inside the ring. Possibly just to break the count this time. Shayna Baszler starting to wear at ringside. Baszler's got the advantage in this situation. I don't know what Bianca Belair is really thinking right now. Maybe realizing Baszler is going to get up and was looking to take the moment to breathe, but obviously a mistake by the challenger. Oh, look at Shayna. Like a caged animal who just broke out from the walls, going after the ankle of Bianca. After dragging her out to ringside, enemy territory for a challenger at a championship match. Baszler is in advantage territory right now as she once again gut wrenched to Bianca Belair at ringside. And what a matchup this has been for the Women's World Championship on behalf of Friday Night SmackDown. Tonight, at your final live premiere event of 2023. This is Armageddon. Count of six. Both women back inside the squared circle as Shayna Baszler. Like a snake that's. Look at us seek its prey, and there's a big time spear to Bianca Belair. And into the cover to retain the gold. I thought she had it there, but the heart of Bianca Belair is still pumping. That was a mean spear by Baszler. Somehow Bianca is still into this matchup, but maybe not for long. It's one thing to survive, it's a whole nother thing to thrive, and Bianca certainly is not thriving right now. Shayna Baszler like a shark in infested waters. Look at her drop the knee to no avail. Window of opportunity for the challenger. Can she capitalize? Underhook, backbreaker. Nice maneuver, but can she capitalize again? There's the strength of Bianca for a third time in this match. Face first, Baszler goes from a distance. And Shayna once again rolled to the outside, where she knows she has the advantage. But Bianca Belair, not afraid, as we've seen multiple times in this matchup. Again, over the top rope, but went to the well one too many times. Bianca soaring through the skies, but Baszler saw it coming from a mile away. And, one, and maybe once again in this matchup, just goaded her challenger in. Can't go to the well. 
with repeated maneuvers against somebody as dangerous and as calculated as the Queen of Spades. Bianca making a huge mistake in my estimation. And Shayna Baszler is making her pay. And this is stacking offense at its finest display. Bianca Belair is hurt. Shayna Baszler damn near me, may be foaming at the mouth. And she's looking to go for the Karafuda clutch. Bianca Belair down and out. Oh, wait a minute. Elbows to the rib cage. Bianca floats over. Pinfall, pinfall. Oh man, she almost had her. Bianca almost stealing the victory. That was a huge reversal that time. Baszler kicked out, but the momentum back with the challenger. Oh man, we are witnessing a late match of the year candidate between Baszler and Bianca as Bianca comes to the top, but once again crashes and burns. Oh, look at the adrenaline rolling through the EST. Down she goes. Spine buster by the strongest, the fastest, the meanest, the roughest and toughest in the women's division. The EST of the WWE looking to become the women's world champion. And Moonsault. Bianca is fired up. And by the sounds of it, Detroit, Michigan firmly behind the challenger. Bianca's got to capitalize. Baszler was starting to stack that offense moments ago. Bianca's now giving it right back to her. Does she have enough for one more KOD? Possibly the 450 splash. Whatever's going to be that exclamation point to get the win. Wait a minute. Baszler going for the quick pin, not just yet. Man, what an action-packed matchup between these two SmackDown women. Another reversal that time. Shayna send to Bianca into the ropes and there's the fatigue. Bianca not able to stop her momentum, not able to at least hit the ropes, just gets sent body over top and down the ringside. And Shayna not rushing. Will happily take a count out victory if need be. History may just repeat itself. From London, England to Detroit, Michigan. But Bianca rushes inside of the ring and gets met with a step up. Super women punch once again. And now Baszler again from behind. And she drops to the canvas, it may be over. Karafuda clutch, Bianca Belair in the clutches of the Queen of Spades. Dead center of the ring, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Bianca Belair's got no choice but to tap out. What a matchup for the Women's World Championship here tonight at Armageddon. But the result remains what it has been predominantly throughout 2023. The Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, is playing chess, not checkers. And the Women's World Championship is staying around the waist of Shayna freaking Baszler. Here is your winner. WWE Women's World Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. That was one hell of a fight between these two women from SmackDown, a late match of the year candidate in my book. But at the end of the day, first Women's World Championship defense of its kind, and the championship remains with, as of now, its rightful holder. But from one world championship to another, as coming up next, it is the last chance for the Rated R Superstar Edge to capitalize and become World Heavyweight Champion one more time in his already Hall of Fame career. But standing across the ring, the intimidating Ring General Gunther. Tonight. Under the unforgiving gaze of destiny, we bear witness to a tale of redemption, of ambition, and of two warriors bound by destiny. In one corner stands the rated R superstar, a Hall of Famer, a man whose pursuit of the World Heavyweight Championship has been a relentless odyssey. Edge, a name synonymous with greatness, has faced the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre, 
engaged in epic battles, only to be denied the gold time and time again. The chase seemed unending, as McIntyre proved to be better than ever. Until just three weeks ago, at Survivor Series, a seismic shift in the landscape occurred. The ring general, Gunther, stood victorious, dethroning McIntyre in a display of dominance that shook the very foundation of the WWE. Gunther's reign commenced, and he became a force unparalleled, a champion who instilled fear into the hearts of his opponents. Tonight, on this ominous stage of Armageddon, Edge finds himself facing not only a champion, but a force of nature. Gunther, a name that echoes through the realms of competition, a man who has toppled giants and shattered expectations. The question lingers, can Edge, the legend, the rated R superstar, find the magic one more time? But there's a twist to this narrative, a twist that adds a layer of desperation. Gunther, almost amused by Edge's persistence, granted him a title match with one condition. A condition that would forever alter Edge's fate. If he fails to seize the gold tonight, he will never again have the opportunity to challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship as long as Gunther reigns supreme. The legend Edge, desperate for one more taste of glory, has agreed to these terms. Now, with his back against the wall, with the stakes higher than ever, the rated R superstar steps into the abyss, ready to defy the odds, ready to etch another chapter in his storied career. Tonight, December the 10th, at Armageddon, in this crucible of competition, two titans collide. Edge, with everything to gain, and Guther, determined to solidify his reign. It's more than a match. It's a clash of legacies, a battle for the ages, who will emerge victorious, and whose career will forever be altered by the echoes of Armageddon. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and is for the World Heavyweight Championship! It is your first of two main event attractions here tonight in Detroit, Michigan. This one coming your way courtesy of Friday Night SmackDown. The World Heavyweight Championship is on the line. And I'll tell you what, this matchup is certainly going to be a case of iron sharpens iron. Edge, the Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it. Gunther, the world champion, one of the best in the world today. When these two titans clash, I expect nothing but a physical, grueling altercation for the World Heavyweight Championship. This is a first time ever matchup, and it very well may be a last time ever matchup. If Edge loses this match tonight, after all the championship opportunities he has received this year, there will be no more. As long as Gunther holds the gold, Edge will be not only at the back of the line, but not even welcomed in the line. It is the last chance, win or go home, for the Rated R Superstar. The stakes couldn't be any higher. And I'll tell you what, the mood changes when the ring general enters the room. Three weeks ago tonight, Gunther, as you saw in the video package, a seismic shift in the WWE landscape at Survivor Series when the ring general defeated the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre, a task we thought nobody could achieve. McIntyre holding that gold for 200 60 plus days here in the WWE, defeating the likes of AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, John Cena, Austin Theory, Randy Orton, and Edge on numerous occasions. But the ring general Guther was the kryptonite to the Scottish Warrior three weeks ago. Now, he enters his first championship defense since winning the World Heavyweight Championship, but will the stakes for Edge be too much in the sense for 
Gunther to handle. Will the stakes be so high that Edge forces himself to limits he's never seen before? Will tonight be the night after a grueling 2023 that Edge finally obtains the big gold belt? It is the SmackDown main event. World Heavyweight Championships on the line. Let's send things down to the ring for your official championship match introductions. Introducing the challenger from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 249 pounds, Edge! And his opponent from Vienna, Austria, weighing in at 297 pounds, he is the World Heavyweight Champion, World Heavyweight Championship and the final opportunity for Edge. Edge challenged Drew McIntyre, a King of the Ring in June, at Money in the Bank in July, and at No Mercy in September. All coming up short in those occasions when the world title was on the line. Gunther said, I'll give you one shot, Edge, but if you don't pick up the victory, there will be no more opportunities. Win or back of the line, Win or end of the line for Edge as the SmackDown main event is underway. Should be very interesting to see how this matchup progresses. Edge, one of very few men who is going to stand eye to eye with the ring general Gunther. And Edge trying to take the fight to Gunther in the early going. First time ever matchup. Stakes couldn't be any higher. Very much anticipated meeting here tonight at Armageddon. No personal animosity here between Edge and Gunther. Just the World Heavyweight Championship and a desire to fulfill your quote-unquote destiny on Friday Night SmackDown. Who will be the better man as this championship matchup progresses? I want to thank you for joining us thus far. What has been an awesome evening, a very competitive evening inside of that squared circle. Championships been on the line all night long here at the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan for Armageddon. It has been hot and heavy all the way through as Edge, early pinfall here, gets the two. Gunther gets the shoulder off the canvas. Edge starting out this matchup the only way he knows how. Persevering. And throwing live rounds at Gunther, which is something the ring general does very well. Edge coming out hot, but how will he be able to survive an onslaught from Gunther? Something not many men are usually able to do. Even if you do, to reach to the end of a matchup with Gunther. Gunther's only suffered one loss in his entire WWE run on Friday Night SmackDown. Of course, one year ago yesterday, Guther made his debut on the blue brand. Only, as we mentioned, came up short one time. That was at SummerSlam this year to Cody Rhodes. Ever since then, we've talked about endlessly how the ring general Guther seemingly just kicked things into a new gear, been more aggressive than ever. It really is what led him to winning the world championship three weeks ago. Will Edge be able to crack the code that is the ring general tonight? All remains to be seen. This fight gets taken to the outside, and Gunther did a lot of damage to Drew McIntyre on the outside three weeks ago. Edge trying to beat Gunther to the punch. Those barricades certainly were not in favor of the Scottish Warrior in Madison Square Garden, but they may help Edge. Oh, man, I didn't even notice. Gunther got out of the way. Edge crashing and burning off that splash to the outside, and now the champion with a hammer fist right to the heart of the Rated R Superstar. Hell no. Gunther, going pedal to the metal, turning the volume up to 10, power bond to the outside, and this is where Gunther becomes a caged animal unleashed. Power bomb right to the outside, something we saw numerous times in his matchup with Drew McIntyre three weeks ago in the garden. Still haven't seen nor heard from Drew McIntyre since losing the world championship. After an illustrious run on top of SmackDown, damn near all year long. McIntyre taking a few weeks off to rest and recuperate, I'm sure, was not 100% coming out of that meeting with the ring general. Nonetheless, I'm sure not only Drew McIntyre, but the rest of the SmackDown locker room has got their eyes on this matchup, which will be very telling for the foreseeable future of the main event scene on SmackDown. 
Is Gunther's reign only just beginning, or is the Rated R Superstar finally going to achieve the task he has been chasing all year long? Gunther turning the book on Edge in this matchup, but never count out the Iconoclast. Already a Hall of Famer, decorated world champion, but Edge hungry for more. Just two weeks ago on SmackDown, Edge and Rey Mysterio, who we saw in action earlier tonight, taking down Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium. Tonight, Guther walks into this matchup alone, something almost honorable of the ring general, just as he did when he fought McIntyre at Survivor Series. Here comes Edge, taking things to the outside again, or at least sending Guther for a ride. I'd say it's dangerous for Edge to meet Guther out there, but the Rated R Superstar has to open all the windows and hope an opportunity flies through. And that time it was just Edge flying through the sky, and now the Rated R Superstar is clearing off the announce table. Edge better be careful. Turn is back on Gunther. Edge better came into this match with an A plan, a B plan, a C plan, all the way to Z. It was damn near an impossible task to keep down Gunther inside the middle of that ring. Can Edge have the answer tonight? Gunther, no rookie, no slouch, but Edge, the more experience of the two, especially in the main event scene in world title matches here in the WWE. Will that veteran status play in to this result tonight? All remains to be seen as Guther placed on the middle buckle. Edge coming to meet him there. The big time neck breaker signature out of the Arsenal of Raider, our superstar. Guther getting the shoulder up in Detroit. Showing their appreciations for the efforts of these two SmackDown All-Stars thus far. Guther getting caught in a midsection spear from the middle buckle. And only a one count that time. Guther able to survive. We've seen Edge institute that middle rope spear a lot throughout 2023. Something that hasn't necessarily gained him victory, but has certainly led him to victory, damaging his opponents on the way. I'm sure Edge, even though he only got the one count, is hoping for the same as he scales the ropes. And rated R Superstar not afraid to throw caution in the wind in the means of success. Crossbody into another pinfall. To win the gold, not just yet another one count that time. That just shows you the intestinal fortitude of the ring general Gunther, like him or not, as tough as they come, and one of the reasons why he has only suffered one defeat over the last year on Friday Night SmackDown. Edge has been in control the last number of minutes, may not have been able to keep down the ring general, but certainly stacking up the offense. He said it as Edge was making his entrance, iron sharpens iron, and Gunther as great as he is, is forcing Edge to be that much greater tonight, but it may come to a screeching halt. Guther going for that chokehold that has defeated so many opponents over the last year on SmackDown. And look at how the momentum stops dead in his tracks. A silence comes upon Little Caesars Arena as the end may be near. Armageddon is dawning on Edge. Now Edge trying to break the hold. A lot of effort left in the Rated R Superstar, using his head as a weapon, and able to take down Guther. And alive comes not only this crowd of Detroit, but the challenger himself. Edge once again coming off the apron. Edge is in control for the last number of minutes against Guther, which is something we don't see too often. Ring General trying to create some distance and not interested in staying on the outside with Edge as he goats Guther in and hangs him up on the top. Edge hasn't found victory yet, but he may be getting near it. The World Championship may be changing hands for the second time in a month. Three weeks ago, Guther won the title in Madison Square Garden. From New York City to Detroit, Will Edge Accomplish this goal tonight, Edge-O-Matic. Guther still in it. And Guther again, just trying to create some distance. Oh, and he gets caught that time, does Edge. 
The ring general with his eyes locked. Could be our last symphony, the move that pinned Drew McIntyre. Counter by Edge, but now Gunther hoisting up the rated R superstar. Death Valley driver position, but elects for the snake eyes. Dare I say, Gunther may be fighting an uphill battle in the sense of offense right now, predominantly being controlled by Edge, has this match thus far. Gunther playing catch up in a sense. May not have defeated Edge with that choke cold a few moments ago, but had it in for a couple of seconds. Oh, back fist kick. Combination strikes by the world champion. Well, we just said it. Guther playing catch up and really showing that first hand moments ago with those strikes. A couple of live rounds by the world heavyweight champion. And now Edge feeling the brunt of it on the outside. And all know Guther going for a second power bomb at ringside. Second of the match, Edge feeling the war path. And Gunther not done as he sends the Rated R Superstar back inside the squared circle. You know, one thing you can honorably say about Gunther, he's never been a man to win his matches via countout or disqualification. He gets it done in between the ropes. One of the reasons he's been so successful. One of the reasons why he has been so intimidated. Wait a minute, Edge catching Gunther. Reversal. Guther went to the outside. Edge catches him with the crossbody. I'll tell you this, Edge certainly not intimidated by the ring general tonight. Edge willing to do any means necessary to add to his already Hall of Fame career. And that may include turning his sights to the announce table he cleared off earlier on. Guther may be in trouble. Edge with an execution through the announce table. The World Heavyweight Champion is down. Edge realizes that the task is as tall as ever tonight. Oh, Guther with a counter. What the hell? Guther with a counter. And after being put through the announce table with an execution, it's the ring general who sends his opponent back inside the ring. Edge trying to fight. It ends the gurry. Man, the, the, the task has never been taller for Edge. I know we said it moments ago, but it must be repeated. The Rated R Superstar trying anything, throwing anything in the kitchen sink at the champion tonight. And will it be enough to win the gold? And Guther kicks out. Oh, and I think Guther realized in the... In his heart of hearts that he was getting close that time. Might have thought the, the count was even closer by milliseconds. You see the enthusiasm in that kick out. A desperation kick out by the world champion. Guther is in for a big fight tonight as Edge with a power bomb of his own sits out with it. Another pinfall. But Guther's still in it. I'll tell you what, man. Edge has... Came into this matchup with multiple game plans and no matter what he has had to do to adjust on the fly, clearly something's working. The champion is down and he may not be the world heavyweight champion himself yet, but offense is offense. And wait a minute here, counter power bomb by Guther. And it survives the power bomb out of nowhere, but the rated R superstar is still in this match. And Edge is coming alive. Edge is coming unglued. Back against the wall. Uphill battle. Every metaphor you want to think of, Edge is representing. Guther with an overhand shot. Dropping the arms of the Rated R Superstar. And a headbutt to the spine. This is what the World Championship is all about. The final live premiere event of 2023 between two of SmackDown's best. Edge placing Guther on the top. Could be looking for a little Frankensteiner. The horrors of Armageddon. The horrors of the Frankensteiner. Edge soaking in the adulation from this sold out crowd in Detroit, Michigan. He's got to capitalize here. 
Put Gunther through the announce table and he was up within moments. Edge kicked out of the powerbomb, but how much did it take out of the Iconoclast himself? Now what does Edge have in mind? Gunther up against the ropes, Edge. Wheels are spinning as he sends the ring general over the top. Royal Rumble is until January 7th. There's a preview right there. Edge sending the world champion to the outside. Guther clearly feeling fatigued as Edge. Wait a minute, a spear! A spear by Edge on the outside of the ring. Edge putting Guther on the outside where the punishment would be inflicted just a little bit more. A spear by the Rated R Superstar, sending the world champion back in the ring. Oh, wait a minute, Edge isn't going for the cover. I think Edge realizes that the ring general may need one more final blow. Charges at the champion, Guther rejects, arms up, defense. Overhead shot, Guther. Oh no, Joe Cold is locked back in. Has Edge thrown his final shot? Is this all, the, all she wrote for the Rated R Superstar? Is it the end of the line? It is World Championship aspirations. Edge is beginning to fade. You see it in his hand motions, in the body language. Oh, wait a minute. Never count out the Hall of Famer. We've seen Edge. Oh, wait a minute. Pull out maneuvers in this matchup that we haven't seen in quite some time, possibly ever, and he almost got the champion that time. I don't know, Edge, you may not want to start throwing live rounds. Guther gonna get you, power bomb number two. And that's it. They're gonna be carrying him out like cardboard. Guther retains the World Heavyweight Championship. Well, I'll tell you what, an absolute banger certified here at Armageddon, but the world championship ain't going nowhere. Here is your winner, and still world heavyweight champion, Gunter. Edge will no longer be able to challenge for the world heavyweight championship as long as Gunther holds the gold. What is going to be next for the Rated R Superstar? And who the hell is going to step up to the most dominating, intimidating force in SmackDown history? The Ring General, Gunther! The time is now to become part of something bigger than yourself. A force that will change the game. Do I have everybody's, everybody's attention, attention now? now? There's nothing I could say. Nothing I could say. Well, coming up next, it is your main event. Six roll all-stars step inside the Devil's Playground. Hell in a cell for the most prestigious prize in the industry today, the WWE Championship. In the relentless chaos that has consumed Monday Night Raw for months, a storm has been brewing. A tempest of ambushes, backstage brawls, and challengers vying for supremacy. The answer to control this anarchy lies within the unforgiving steel of the Devil's Playground. The Hell in a Cell. Tonight, the culmination of these intertwined destinies will take place inside the most demonic structure known to mankind. The stories of these warriors have clashed and converged, creating a tapestry of war and ambition that can only be settled within the confines of hell in a cell. Seth Rollins, the embattled champion, has gone to war with the Celtic warrior Sheamus in a relentless pursuit to 
to retain his title. Karrion Kross, a force of nature, has targeted anyone who dared to leave him embarrassed inside the ring. Tommaso Ciampa, a storm of fury, has battled through competition to rise to the main event of Monday Night Raw. Kevin Owens, forced to find a new level of focus, cross paths with some of Raw's most dangerous superstars. Solo Sokoa, a man of unbridled aggression, has made it clear that he will inflict endless pain on anyone standing in his way of obtaining the WWE Championship. The odds are stacked against the champion tonight. It's an all-out war inside hell in a cell at Armageddon. Rollins, Cross, Solo, Champa, Sheamus, Owens, each a gladiator vying for victory in war. Only one man can emerge from this battleground as the WWE Champion, but who will have enough within them to survive hell in a cell? Armageddon beacons, and the stage is set for an unholy showdown inside the Devil's Playground. The WWE Championship hangs in the balance as the Warriors prepare for their toughest battle yet. Only time will unveil the survivor in this hellacious contest. The end is here. It is main event time from the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Six Raw All Stars, one hell in a cell structure. And the WWE Championship is on the line. The following contest is a six man hell in a cell match and is for the WWE Championship. Introducing the challenger from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing in at 250 pounds, Solo. Next time we come your way for a live premiere event, it is four weeks from tonight, Sunday, January the 7th, 2024. We are heading to the T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada, for a Sin City Royal Rumble, where we will kick off the road to WrestleMania. But who will be the WWE Champion heading into the Royal Rumble? We find out right now, as the chaos that has conflicted Monday Night Raw month after month comes to a cold and destructive end. Solo Sokoa enters the squared circle, and you want to talk the narrative of cold, destructive, and downright evil. Look no further than the Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross. And I'll tell you what, Karrion Cross cannot be in a good mood coming up short to Sheamus this past Monday night on Raw, and three weeks ago tonight at Survivor Series, his team coming up short to Sheamus' team in that traditional four-on-four -four matchup. The Harbinger of Doom, Karrion Cross, a man who has been chasing the WWE Championship ever since the summer, finds himself in another opportunity tonight to obtain the gold with five other hungry challengers. Will Karrion Cross be able to finally bring home the WWE Championship? Yeah! Very well may be a dark day in Doomsday if Karrion Cross can accomplish that goal. This is going to be a very chaotic matchup. It is hell in a cell, the most demonic structure ever created. They don't call it the Devil's Playground because it looks cool on a t-shirt. This is Armageddon. The end is here. The final live premiere event of 2023. It is literally go big, go home, survive or die trying, and leave with the WWE Championship. Anything goes, one fall to a finish. Earlier tonight, we called the Tornado Tag Team match unpredictable. Well, I think the ante might have just been upped as our main event is getting ready to get underway. So far, two challengers have entered, but there's a field of superstars left, all with one end goal in mind, and that's Monday Night Raw's richest prize, the WWE title.
That ominous structure hangs above the ring. As Solo Sokoa, Karrion Cross have entered. And next in line, the Blackheart, Tommaso Ciampa, with a second chance at greatness, three weeks removed from a shortcoming at Survivor Series. And from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, weighing in at 201 pounds, Tommaso Ciampa. I want to bring up this point because it very well may play into the favorite of Tommaso Ciampa in this matchup. All the other men in this match, from Seth Rollins to all the challengers, have been active on Monday Night Raw the last three weeks. But Tommaso Ciampa has not been in action since three weeks ago at Survivor Series. Very well could play in to Tommaso Ciampa being the freshest man in the match. Very well could be the favorite as the WWE Championship hell in a cell structure and matchup progresses. Oh, ho, ho. Well, the WWE Champion eagerly awaiting walking down the aisle. Not going to wait one more blithering second. The Visionary, the Revolutionary, and the WWE Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. Well, we're going to find out tomorrow if you, the fans, voted Seth Rollins as the Men's Superstar of the Year for 2023. But we find out tonight if Rollins is even going to walk into Monday Night Raw tomorrow as the WWE Champion. Rollins walked into this year as the World Champion over on SmackDown, and ever since he was drafted to Monday Night Raw in the spring, has certainly changed the landscape of the red brand from winning Money in the Bank in July, cashing in successfully at SummerSlam, turning away the challenges of Sheamus not once but twice, Tommaso Ciampa at Survivor Series. But no doubt the biggest obstacle to date for the visionary of Monday Night Raw. Five challengers and a target on the back of the WWE Champion. And remember what happened two weeks ago. Kevin Owens defeating Solo Sokoa in the main event, only to be curb stomped by the champion himself. And from Marieville, Quebec, Canada, weighing in at 266 pounds, Kevin Owens! Listen, at the end of the day, you can make an argument for any six of these men leaving Hell in the Cell with the gold. Tommaso Ciampa may be the freshest, absolutely. But Kevin Owens, three weeks ago at Survivor Series, fought through a 3-1 to one disadvantage against Solo Sokoa, Damian Priest, and Karrion Cross to win that traditional Survivor Series matchup. If Cross, or excuse me, if Kevin Owens can survive those odds, what is stopping the prize fighter from getting through these five men, surviving Hell in a Cell, and accomplishing that lifelong dream here tonight? Do not look past Kevin Owens. Do not look past anybody in this Hell in the Cell main event. We know what it's only fitting that this man's entrance was saved for last. December the 10th. Let me look into the calendar here. I believe it says Fight Night. And representing the Brawling Brutes from Dublin, Ireland. Weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic warrior, Sheamus! One of two things could have happened for Sheamus tonight. The Brawling Brutes retain their titles and he hopes to walk away with one himself. Or the Brawling Brutes, as they did, lose their titles and it lights a fire under the ass of the Celtic warrior. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Six men have entered. The cell will be lowered. Only one man will leave Detroit with the WWE Championship. It is main event time live at Armageddon. The bell has sounded. We are underway. One fall to a finish. Anarchy expected. 
We're going to do our best to keep up with all the action, but as you can already see, it is going to be chaotic in there, as it has been on Monday Night Raw, month in and month out, almost ever since Seth Rollins won the WWE Championship. He has had a target on his back, as champions always do. You know what? Well documented that Solo Sokoa has had his hands, certainly with the blood on them over the last few months, ever since he took out the almighty Bobby Lashley, which created that deadly games eliminator in the lead up to Survivor Series, put Champa in the running for the gold and really reinvigorated all of these superstars. Willingness and desire to become champion as carrying a cross, delivering Seth Rollins, the first man to meet the steel. Pinfall and submission can only take place inside the ring. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Superstars can battle on the outskirts, absolutely, but the decision must be made in the confines of the ropes. No disqualifications. Goes without saying, Rollins introducing a kendo stick that time. As Kevin Owens going for an early pinfall on Solo Sokoa, but I think we all know it's going to take a lot more than that. I will say, however, even though with a lot of bodies in this matchup and obviously a lot to keep up with, one of the best strategies for any of these superstars may be to try to sneak a pinfall behind the other superstars back. It's not going to be easy. With so many bodies in there, it's a lot of eyes looking at you, a lot of eyes looking over their shoulders. But if somebody can sneak a one, two, three, some of their other challengers' backs or turns, I mean, that might be the best situation, trying to win on luck tonight. Nonetheless, I believe Kerry and Cross trying to slide in a table. Sheamus, Tommaso Ciampa throwing haymakers, picking up where they left off last month at Saturday night's main event. Kerry and Cross, Kevin Owens, remember their match a couple of weeks ago on Raw, interrupted by the street champ. Solo Sokoa, I believe Tommaso Ciampa just got sent into the cell structure as Rollins was trying to pin somebody there. This is what we're talking about. So much action to keep up with between these six Raw All-Stars. Who is going to leave tonight with the WWE Championship? Who is going to walk into the Royal Rumble in Las Vegas, Nevada as the champion on Monday Night Raw? And possibly enter the road to WrestleMania holding one of the richest prizes in the business. Man, no friends, no love loss in this kind of matchup. Rollins, who has teamed with Karrion Cross and Sol Sokoa in recent weeks on Monday Night Raw, has gone after both men as we so would expect in this matchup thus far. Cross on the outside, Sheamus taking care of Ciampa, going to the pinfall, might have caught some of the chair off that victory roll. Nonetheless, not just yet with a victory. Remember the champion Seth Rollins does not have to be pinned to lose his title in this matchup. Any of these challengers can pin one of the others to win the championship, as we might see right there, Cross trying to pin Kevin Owens. This is an elimination style. This is one fall, and we will hear a bell. As Rollins now looking to pin Sheamus, as he has two times in recent months. Going back to Unforgiven in Chicago in September, and going back to Clash at the Castle, Cardiff, Wales in October. That is actually an incorrect statement. It was a last man standing match in Principality Stadium, but I digress. Rollins won the match nonetheless. Rollins and Sheamus pick it up right where they left off as Rollins delivering the four, and I believe from our vantage point, looking through these cell walls, I believe Sheamus might have been busted open off the contact with the corner. Certainly expect some war battles to be shown in this matchup. Oh yeah, Sheamus has got a cut over the left eye, and that is not going to go well for the Celtic Warrior as this matchup progresses. That open wound is going to make him fatigue ten times faster. Sheamus may be at the biggest disadvantage at the current moment because of it. And not only is the cell a weapon in this thing, but you got a table in there that Rollins is precariously looking to set up in the corner. Steel chair still lingering. Tommaso Ciampa now looking under the ring skirt, pulling out another wood. Another wooden table as Rollins sending carrying cross right through the wood. And look at that. Not even able to capitalize and try for a pinfall because the street champ Solo Sokoa sent the WWE Champion flying out of the ring. Oh, and I look at Solo trying to take advantage, but Kevin Owens right there, not allowing a pinfall. I'm not even sure if we have heard a one count in this matchup just yet. So many bodies breaking up the other's fall. It's the 
dangers of the Hell in a Cell. Now Champ and Rollins pick it up where they left off three weeks ago in Madison Square Garden. The last time we saw Champ in action. Will the result be different this time for the Blackheart? Not just yet. Champa could be looking for Project Champ on Rollins. Seth Rollins able to avoid. Sheamus Solo Sokoa going at him on the far side of the ring. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup we have not seen in a couple of months. Battled it out a few months ago on Monday Night Raw. Sheamus was the victor. After all the bad blood in recent weeks between Solo and Sheamus in the midst of this Hell in the Cell lead-up, I would love to see that one-on-one -on -one again. So many bodies on the outside of the ring, and Rollins and Solo going at it for the first time. Those two men were teammates this past Monday night in a losing effort to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Rollins taking out the aggression on the man that was pinned six nights ago. And Solo kicks out. That might be in the closest fall. We had to a decision so far. Oh, goodness. Tommaso Ciampa with a steel chair in hand. Solo Sokoa now. And imagine unintentional alliances in this thing like Solo and Ciampa, Cross and Sheamus. Of course, that was not going to last long. Tommaso Ciampa with the chair to the street, Ciampa now pinfall. Only one in the ring right now. Watch Karrion Cross and Sheamus as Karrion Cross, I believe, just got sent to the cell structure by way of the Celtic Warrior. Doing our best to keep up with the action, the cameraman as well. And Champa delivering the DDT to Solo. Man, look at the carnage that's in the ring. A broken table, a fresh table, steel chairs, kendo sticks. And see, chairs being flown left and right. My goodness. Tommaso Champa may have been studying the Home Depot warehouse before we got to Detroit tonight. Utilizing those chairs to the fullest extent. Man, how many haymakers are being thrown since the opening bell? Oh, look at this. Look at Sheamus and Solo with the double backbreaker on Karrion Cross. Odd alliances. Sheamus now. Sheamus, bro kick on the street champ. Into the cover. Oh, but Rollins there to break it up, not even allowing a one count. You saw Sheamus take advantage of the double team, then hit the bro kick on Solo. Unfortunately for him, too many bodies stirring inside the ring. And Kevin Owens going to turn his sights to Rollins. Remember, as we mentioned, Kevin Owens defeating Solo Sokoa. Absolute barn burner two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. And WWE Champion Rollins getting the last laugh, sending a message to everybody in Hell in a Cell. Vicariously through Kevin Owens when he curb stomped the prize fighter in the middle of the squared circle. And right now, delivering absolute war path. Those cheer steel chair shots. To Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens doing his best to absorb the punishment and sending the champion to the outside. Every man by besides Joe. Oh, there goes Champa. I was about to say every man besides Champa fighting at ringside. At least the closest they can get with that cell structure surrounding them. But here we go. Owens now the WWE champion back in. Tommaso Champa has been the institutor of a lot of the hardware in this match. Sheamus throwing bodies in. Sheamus maybe trying to get some people back in that he can pin, but maybe one too many now. Owens and Sheamus. One of the feuds that was nominated for the rivalry of the year. We'll find out who the winner of that was tomorrow night. Slammy Award edition of Raw. Don't miss it. Rollins and Champa back at it where they were at Survivor Series. Rollins got the last laugh in the garden. Will it be the same tonight? Look at Solo and Karrion Cross going at it. Those two men stood alongside each other at Survivor Series. Certainly weren't friends then, certainly aren't now. And wait a minute, Rollins, pedigree on the steel chair to the Celtic Warrior to cover. I believe that was Tommaso Ciampa who broke up the count. Hey, you remember the final minutes of that last man standing match a couple of months ago in Cardiff, the curb stomp on the chair. Sheamus might be getting a reminder through that pedigree. As Seth Rollins is starting to rule the squared circle. The WWE Champion realizing he's got the biggest target and he's got a fight. Whether he likes it or not. And Solo Sokoa down. Rollins taking out everybody at the moment. Now chair in hand and Rollins trying to take out that mean, bad-ass street champ. 
And brawls inside of the ring, brawls on the outside of the ring. Rollins going at carrying cross, but as his eyes turned, as Kevin Owens looking to take advantage, runs right into the Celtic warrior, Sheamus. And now Owens to the outside. Now the back turn of the Celtic Warrior. One of the dangers of this matchup, having your back turn to your opponents where they can take advantage. Cross taken out solo. Sheamus, Champa, carrying Cross in the ring. And a double noggin knocker by the Blackheart. Oh man, and Kevin Owens sending Rollins right through the cell wall. Payback. A dish best served cold and, oh wait a minute, Kevin Owens is scaling the hell in the cell structure. I do not like this for one moment. We have seen too many bodies break through that roof over the years. Seth Rollins luckily not getting goaded in. Going back inside the ring, Kevin Owens throwing Rollins through that wall. There is now a hole to exit the hell in the cell. I don't even know what to think. These men will never be the same tonight. Their careers will never be the same. Their lives will never be the same. That is why Hell in the Cell is such a demonic structure. And that is what called to end the chaos that has been conflicting on Monday Night Raw week in and week out. I believe Kevin Owens scaled back down and made his way back inside the cell. We see him at ringside there. The other five men battling it out inside the squared circle. Kevin Owens luckily going against his better judgment that time, making it ways back inside the ring, and it may benefit him as he lays out the street champ and elects for the cover, but again, too many bodies stirring. Man, it's like we're getting an early preview of the Royal Rumble match four weeks from tonight. There's action everywhere you look inside the ring. Sheamus and Kevin Owens going at it now. There's the strength by the Celtic Warrior, big time shoulder breaker, and Miffon, meanwhile, get, that gets followed up. If we can keep up with the action. The Samoan dropped by Solo to Tommaso Ciampa. Man, everywhere you look, bodies getting thrown, haymakers being tossed. Meanwhile, there's still a table looming ominously in the left corner of your screen. Sheamus getting sent to the outside. God only knows what's going to happen. It's an open hole in the cell wall thanks to Owens and Rollins. I don't even know if Owens meant to send Rollins through that wall or if there was just such emphatic force that Rollins' body took out the screws. Nonetheless, Rollins using that kendo stick of the Harbinger of Doom to the fullest advantage, but Cross giving him a taste of his own medicine. Feels like every time the path clears and the ring starts to empty, all the bodies converge at once. All re reset, refuel, and meet back at the starting line. Remember the results of this matchup can only be one fall to a finish. Or submission taking place inside of the ring. Ringside, the roof, none of it matters. The streets of Detroit, it's gotta take place inside the ring. Rollins sending carrying cross to the outside. Champa took out Owens. Rollins takes out Champa. Now the WWE champion might have got caught. Reversal. Kick to the gut. Seth Rollins now going for a pedigree on Kevin Owens. And that's going to do it to retain the title. Not just yet, this grueling hell in the cell matchup rolls on. And look at that. Three bodies at once re enter the ring. As Tommaso Ciampa has his eyes set on the visionary. Power bomb through the table. The WWE Champion sent right through the wood by the man who introduced that table, Tommaso Ciampa. And Ciampa not done inflicting punishment in and around the ring. Realizes there's a lot of work left to be done, but he may have had his back turned to the wrong man. Maybe Tommaso Ciampa's night fell just short at Survivor Series. Maybe the night is live here in Detroit, Michigan, where Tommaso Ciampa's star is truly burned. All six men back inside the ring in the middle of this hellacious structure. 
See Cross and Solo teaming up on Champa. Left side of your screen, Sheamus taking out Rollins. And Owens and Cross teaming up to take out Solo momentarily. Short-lived team as Owens now hoists Cross up. Snake eyes. Rollins back in. And as soon as you think somebody's got the advantage, the momentum turns in a second in this matchup. Sheamus still sporting that open wound. As this matchup continues to go into championship rounds, and it's not going to be good for the Celtic Warrior. Rollins with the ripcord knee takes out Owens, but Ciampa, very tail ending. And Ciampa realizes Solo's up, Sheamus is up. He can't go for the victory right now, but instead he can go for a Project Ciampa. Nobody's in the ring. Ciampa's going to win the title. Oh, Rollins kicks out. How close was that? All four other men were on the outside. Champa, fairy tale ending, followed by the Project Champa, just in a mere second away from winning the WWE title. Almost a fairy tale ending in Hell in the Cell, but unfortunately not to be at least right now. The bodies are still stirring. Hell in the Cell is not done yet, but Rollins looking for a conclusion. Stacking up solo, not just yet. You know, we said at the top of the night that Armageddon is about the battle between good and evil. But regardless of the roles you play, tonight is about the WWE Championship and surviving Hell on Earth. Rollins trying to take out all the men. Took out Solo, taking out Cross, looking to eliminate Champa. But there's Kevin Owens, who I believe has been busted wide open from my vantage point. Owens now sporting an open wound as he hangs Sheamus in the tree of woe. And Cross looks to inflict some punishment to the WWE Champion. And there has been no rest period. Not that we expected one, but this has been 100 miles a minute since the opening bell. And it really has to be. You gotta push yourself forward. You gotta force yourself to survive. Correct me if I'm wrong, we're gonna have to wait to get a confirmation, but I believe Solo Sokoa also has an open wound. Not sure when that happened, but the street champ is sporting red. Meanwhile, Rollins with a curb stomp to Tommaso Ciampa. Solo Samoan spike on Sheamus. Double pinfalls. Owens breaks up the first. Owens breaks up the second. The match rolls on. Holy hell, it does not get any more anticipation reaching a peak than this contest. Double finishing maneuvers, but no finish as Kevin Owens spelled disaster. Rollins rolling up Owens. Chippa breaks things up. Seth Rollins may own victories over Sheamus, but for Tommaso Ciampa, it is a whole different ball game tonight. He is finding that out firsthand as this matchup continues to roll on. Look at this, speaking of Cross and Solo. Double team to the Celtic Warrior. And Solo looking to take advantage. Meanwhile, Cross going for the straight jacket on Champa. And Solo's trying to sneak a victory. But the WWE champion still alive. Owens now going back to work on Sheamus. Somebody he's very familiar with, as you saw in the video package before this contest. The wars those two men have been through. The history in 2023 between the Celtic Warrior and the Visionary. From Rollins putting Sheamus on the shelf to Sheamus vying for the WWE title. This could be the ultimate payback that Sheamus has wanted oh so long here tonight. If he can outlast this challenge and win the title. Oh my goodness! I don't know if Rollins was, I think Rollins might have been going to knock Owens off the top rope. Owens was in the air and Rollins inadvertently hit the ref. And still so much action to keep up with. Sheamus is on the outside. I, I don't even know what to say. Hell in the Cell is just reaching an all-timer peak right now. And now there's no referee, at least momentarily. Oh man, you see how lifeless Tommaso Ciampa was being sent over the top rope as Rollins inverted neckbreaker on Karrion Cross. 
Now Solo, wait a minute, Solo, Sakoa, Samoan, Spike on Sheamus. Going for the cover. I hear it too. I believe it got broken up. Rollins, Pedigree on Cross, and Champa breaks it up. Solo, Sakoa, spinning Solo. Into the cover, wait a minute, Rollins, curb stomp. Did you see the curb stomp by Rollins? To carry and cross, backs her turn. Rollins stole it. Rollins retains the WWE Championship. Oh my goodness, it could happen at any moment. Solo, I believe he hit the spinning solo or one of his finishing maneuvers. Backs were turned, bodies were out. Rollins capitalized with a curb stomp on Karrion Cross, and he got the pinfall when he needed it most. Here is your winner, and still the WWE Champion, Seth Freaking Rollins. With his back against the wall, a target on his back, five challengers vying for the same end goal somehow some way the revolutionary survives and the wwe championship remains with seth freaking rollins the slammy award edition of raw comes your way tomorrow night thank you for joining us here in detroit for the 2023 armageddon Pace on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back, I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise, you can hate on that, I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a rider.